everything that I know Says I gotta go tell I'm going solo But I'm never gonna go there again Good morning, everyone. Eddie Huff with you on this Saturday morning with my friend and fellow violator of many laws of this nation, according to the uh, Biden administration. <laughs> boy, you forgot and my whipping boy, yeah. <laughs> Heavy emphasis on boy, but but with with capital B. If that's any consolation. That's just white words. They, yeah. <laughs> that's just black privilege. That's my black privilege. Yeah, I can say whatever I want. But but hey, to to be fair, he has a black son-in-law. So so he 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 kind of has a, a get out of jail free card. And a half black grandson. Yeah, and a half black grandson. So I have half black grandson. No, I've got octoroons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've got quadrants and off guard. Yeah, yes, yeah, so yeah, we're already off guard. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's what make that's what makes our show the most unique show in broadcasting, if that's what you can call this. Yes, low low casting, you know, low, not broad. We're narrow casting, I guess we are. But anyway, oh, by the way, Dave, uh, yeah, it might help if I. Oh, now I get to talk in the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, we're starting off right today, people. Hey, Eddie Huff, Dave, and Rizigam, and we have a special guest to to show how broad our net really is. Yeah. Our, our expense. We have our dear friend from St. Louis, Missouri, my dear friend and colleague that I've grown to know over several years, and we'll get in more into his story. But my dear friend Kareem Abdul Haq. He is our friend here from St. Louis today, and we'll explain Kareem's uh, story a little later. And he's an author, economist, and uh, just really brilliant, brilliant uh, individual. I've gotten to respect and, and know very much. And um, I really want to encourage you to buy some of his books, which he'll explain and get into later. But first, we want to get into some um, of our... Uh, news of the week great but so uh let's see well before we get to the state of the union or or what some are labeling the rage of the union <laughs> rage Bi- of the geezer. Joe, Joe, yeah yeah the geezer rage of the state of the geezer now uh joe biden went went nuts this weekend but uh uh i want to read a couple of things um and get into a couple of things that i pulled off the thing you know, this is where uh, conservatives are are lagging. Uh, the left has figured out how to use government funds for their purposes. Mm-hmm. And conservatives have not figured this out. We have got to get smart enough to figure out how to use other people's money. And once we do that we will, I think, be able to uh, get ahead of the game because we are smarter than them in ideas. They seem to be smarter at the con game. They're, they're smart at being able to take advantage of the ignorance of people. Except that my libertarian friends say, then we'll go bankrupt twice as fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, but listen to this, okay? Uh, An activist group in California has paid nearly 100 public high schoolers $1,400 each to learn how to fight for racial injustice, uh, racial and social justice. uh, The free press is learned. By the way, this is a new uh, site I've come upon. It's Mm -hmm. called the free press. Just free press. huh? Just the free press. And and the, the what I was telling Kareem earlier about the free press it's really a, a pretty cool site. It's different. It's not your conservative website. What the free press is, is a conglomerate of progressive, actually, or, or liberal writers that are true liberals. These are people 
that have gotten fed up with the left. <laughs> yeah, their, their tagline is "Think for yourself." Yeah. What do you know? Novel idea. I know these are these are what true classic liberals from your, your '60s liberal. Yes. The ones who didn't buy the media, mm-hmm. so fed up with the mainstream media that they've now left. Yeah. So in anyway, so that's who's doing this. It's the free press. Mm-hmm. And this article, this is one of them. I've got another one that I want to get into. But anyway, so the free press has found out that this uh, Long Beach Unified School District in California uh, for social justice from 2019 to 2023 has been getting $2 million dollars to facilitate equity and leadership development training for students and teachers. In addition, in addition to student stipends, the contract also allocated a total of 20,200 to 13 parents for participating in the group's programs. Yeah. Starting from December 2019 till now, Long Beach Unified School District in south of Los Angeles has paid at least 78 students a total of nearly $100,000 for participating in a club run by the organization known as CFJ. The most recent contract runs until June 2024. CFJ boasts on its sites to have trained hundreds of youths of color in Long Beach to be community leaders and organizers. In Long Beach, the group successfully advocated for implementing restorative justice practices across the district's 84 schools, according to the site. In 2021, for example, CFJ implemented three student-led professional development training sessions in the district's high schools, which ca- uh, cost the district $25,000, according to the contracts. During these trainings, students were encouraged to school their own teachers on topics like implicit bias, the uh, uh, student voice, and anti-black racism. So did you catch that last sentence? They were trained to school their teachers. The, 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 mm-hmm. the kids are teaching the teachers yeah. how to teach mm-hmm. and fight uh, anti uh, social justice and anti-black racism. So this is how we have to wake up. Mm-hmm. This is what's going on in our schools. In the meantime, in Oklahoma, this is going on in, at a different level. This is why they're trying to get rid of Ryan Walters mm-hmm. because Ryan Walters is fighting this type of thing happening yes. in our Oklahoma He's schools. It. He's yeah. exposing it, mm-hmm. the same type of thing. And yet we have so-called conservative parents that don't want to support Ryan Walters or won't. They'll sit back and watch this mm-hmm. and let him get beaten and bludgeoned yeah in the media and in the press without coming to his aid. Mm-hmm. You probably have the same thing going on in St. Louis mm-hmm. in Missouri and Kansas mm-hmm. where uh, conservative people, conservative justice warriors mm-hmm. are getting pummeled without any support, without any help. Yeah. And, and pastors in particular, I, again, I get so upset when I hear pastor week after week preaching about, you know, how many people got saved, how many people got baptized, how many people did this, how much did that, what we did and how much we're building this, we're building that. And, and you got kids being subjected to all this crap day in and day out. Mm -hmm. And they leave home, go to, go to college, go wherever. And this is what really is going to affect them long-term. Yeah. This is why, Young people don't believe in God. Mm -hmm. This is why young people are getting abortions. This is why young people aren't getting married Mm -hmm. and are shacking up. This is why young people don't believe that uh, the life of the unborn Mm -hmm. is really a life. These are the things that are really important. Yeah, they're the enlightened. And they've been, you know, indoctrinated with uh, college degrees to back it up. That's the problem in that. Yeah. You know, it's it's our secular education system. Yeah. Yep. Um then I, I came across this too. Uh you know, you think that the never Trumpers 
are being flushed out. Well, I guess they are because I've got another. But here's another one popped up. I never even heard of this guy. Have you heard of Senator Todd Young? Doesn't ring a bell. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. All of a sudden, you know, it's like whack a mole, mm-hmm. Romney. <laughs> uh, what's her name? McCain. <laughs> well, McCain, yeah, but even uh, uh, what's the vice, the former vice president's daughter? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, Cheney. Cheney, you know, yeah, Romney, just, Cheney is a whack a mole. You know, here pops yeah. another, pops another, You know, mm-hmm. and a bunch of them are retiring and getting out because mm-hmm. they know they're going to lose. Oh yeah, and it, boom, here pops another one, Todd Young. Does that name mean anything? No. Never heard. Okay. Got the well, feeling I will find out. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me educate you. Yeah. Tanya, Indiana Republican senator. He's not even a congressman. Oh, my God. He's a senator in Indiana. Oh, which state means, senator. No. U.S. senator. U.S. senator. I did not know. They only have two. Right. Right. J.D. Vance mm-hmm. and this guy. Oh, Todd Young told the media on Friday, days after former President Trump's commanding Super Tuesday performance, that he will not be endorsing the president or the former president. He's still president in my book. So once always, uh, nothing changed from my standpoint, Young told CNN. Of course, he got to get in front of CNN. Mm -hmm. After WWEV 44 News reported that Young will not support Trump due to the former president's position and comments on Russia's war in Ukraine. I trust the people I represent to make their own decisions on who they are going to vote for. Young took office in 2017 and was reelected to the Senate in 2022, beating his Democratic challenger by about 20 points. Mm -hmm. Only 20 points. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, well, actually 20 points, I guess, is a pretty good margin. But but Young was only uh, one of four one of only four GOP senators Trump did not uh, endorse for re-election that year. Mm-hmm. So Trump didn't, and, you, and now you see why. I, I don't think he endorsed at all in that race, to be clear. Well, no, it says he was only one of four that Trump. That's what I'm saying. In that race, Trump did not endorse in oh, that Senate oh, race. Oh, right, right, yeah. right, yeah. Uh, but uh, apparently, I mean, this is, you know, but, you know, with friends like these, I mean, but you still got these these guys. These oh, yeah. never you've got these never Trumpers no, that and, are still in there. And you know the the thing you find in Indiana politics is very much pro industrial military complex. Uh the um uh, Pence, he's one of the worst. Mm, yeah, totally funded by that's him. true. You know, um, my oldest son happens to be really tight with his former chief of staff. And has given me a lot of insight and information on that. And now even my son is repudiating that Trump yeah uh repudiating Pence oh even though he's closely connected with Pence's machine right it, uh, it's like it, done military industrial complex yeah so um so Indiana must have some um corporations that have defense contracts yeah probably. and it's always been a Republican state oh yeah it just really has yeah it's not Ohio yeah, which, yeah. Which both switched. sides of it Indiana <laughs> Ohio are you know not that way but Indiana is very um it's actually more rural than you think yeah Indianapolis used to not be a very big city you know I mean when I was a kid and it's funny that you know you have JD Vance mm-hmm. who is one of Donald Trump's staunchest mm-hmm. allies in Ohio. always has been I thought he was in Indiana. No, he's Ohio. Oh, he's Ohio. Yeah, I get those two confused. Okay. I yeah. there. So, but it's in a, Indiana's no it states away from you because you're you're Missouri. I'm always thinking Illinois. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, it's uh you know, you wonder how do these people it, it reminds me kind of of the Oklahoma legislature. Mm, yeah. You know, because yeah. I think what what it, let me just take a little sidebar here. A uh, uh, sidebar, <laughs> rabbit. Yeah. You used to call them chasing rabbits, squirrels, <laughs> squirrels. Yeah, yes. yeah. No, what I think has happened in Oklahoma, and we we probably nationally in certain mm-hmm. states, you have people that are were officially Democrats at one point. Mm-hmm who realize they can't win as Democrats. Mm-hmm. So they switch or or become Republicans at an early age. Yeah. But inside, they're still the rhinos, Republicans oh, in yeah. name only, Republicans yeah. in name only. Mm-hmm. Okay. And because 
they feel, okay, I can win now as a Republican, but I can then still Mm -hmm. do my thing as a Democrat. Mm -hmm. My position, position position-wise, I can either Mm -hmm. thwart the Republicans or push forward my Democratic social agenda. Sound like Haley or somebody. Right, exactly. And so this is what I think is happening, and I think that's what you've got here. Uh, and you, in several states, that's what's going on. And this is what we have to fight. That's why you have to be careful of who you're voting for, not just vote in the primary. Primaries are so important to really know who you're voting for and and what their position is before you yeah. before you. I can uh, give you a name, uh, Ken Luttrell, was a Democrat member of the legislature in Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, then left, worked in you know this private sector, and then ran again as a Republican, and now is in leadership in the Republican legislature. Ah, uh-huh. see, there you go, Ken Luttrell. He's the poster boy. And there's others. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But, you know, it's it's kind of funny because when we were so staunchly Democrat controlled, there were a lot of very, very conservative Democrats. Democrats. Yeah. 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 So So anyway, remember that name, Todd Young. If you know people in Indiana, if you see people. Give money to the conservative. Yeah. Get rid of this guy. Mm-hmm. Get 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 somebody, some true Republican. Mm-hmm. And I want to cover one more thing here before we get into some more uh, other current stuff. A lot of people, I mean, unless you're born under a rock, mm-hmm. but uh, most Americans that are over 40 in particular mm-hmm. will remember Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. The famous speech, I Have a Dream. And uh, people don't realize that he did not write this speech. Okay. This speech was written by a man named uh, Bayard Rustin. How about that? B-A-Y-A-R-D, Rustin. Bayard Rustin was a very intelligent black man. Mm -hmm. He was friends with uh, MLK's grandfather, Rustin was uh, basically a communist, uh, and uh, as was uh, Obama's grandpa. Yeah. And uh, Rustin was something else. He was a homosexual. Okay. He was gay, as they say. So Bayard could not deliver the speech. He could forward and let it be known that he was involved in this because you know in the demo so what they did they and and in the black community back in that day the black community was very anti-gay yes culturally very conservative right even though homosexuality was pretty rampant even back then still Mm -hmm. in the black community but it was as they say on the down low Mm -hmm. And so, but anyway, Bayard Rustin was the guy who wrote the I Dream of, I started to say I Dream of Genie. <laughs> well, well, I have a dream speech. Well, my question too is, you know, uh, MLK was what, in his 40s when he gave, delivered the speech? No, he he, he was 39 when you, he died. Okay, okay. Oh, uh, they were okay, 30s. So he's a pretty young man. No, no, no. No, he was, it was early 30s because he. Yeah, that was some time. He, um, he was like but, 31. But what I'm getting at is his would also been an elderly man then at that point. Well, wait, 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 wait. we're talking about two different people. You're, very, talk, you're talking about, well, wait a minute. he was Obama's. Okay. Slow down, Dave. Was friends with his grandpa. I'm sorry. That's part was of friend with Obama's granddad. Baird Rustin was Obama's uh, grandpa's okay. friend. Okay. See, we're talking two different. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So Baird was a contemporary as far as age and generation to MLK. Uh, he was older. A little older, a little older, but could have given the speech. It wasn't that right, his right? Yes, friend. oh yes, right, right. Gotcha. right that was right, what I said. Right. Right. Well, he was born in nineteen twelve. Okay, okay. So yeah, he was a bit older, mm-hmm. but anyway. Uh, so, uh, but here, here's the interesting thing, and this again is from the Free Press, which is interesting. It's written by yeah. a man Coleman Hughes in okay. the Free Press. Now, this is from uh, an essay Bayard Rustin wrote 
1965. Well, that would have been after the after the speech. Okay, a few years after, but he saw what was coming. It was almost a prophetic. In fact, the title of the article is The Prophet Bayard Rustin. Yeah. I mean, it's funny that the interesting things you find if, you, if you're willing to go beyond. See, see. Uh, let me chase another rabbit here real quick. <laughs> the problem with so many liberals, and I have a lot of friends that are very liberal, all they want to do is watch MSNBC. They may, they may. They may occasionally wander off the reservation and watch CNN. <laughs> mm-hmm. And if they really want to get out there, they'll go to NBC. You know, mm-hmm. but but that's about as far as they're going to go. Mm-hmm. New York Times, mm-hmm. oh, oh, PBS. Oh yes, yes, right, yes. Okay. Well, on the other side, we have our conservatives that what want to watch OAN. Mm-hmm. Newsmax, mm-hmm. and occasionally we may want to go to Fox News. That's oh. about as far off the reservation as we're going to go. Yeah. We but, won't read anything else. Yeah. Even Trump criticizes Fox News now. It's not, right. Yeah. So, but if we do that, we don't get enough information mm-hmm. to know what we're dealing with. Mm-hmm on the other side. And we've got to quit that. We've got to know what the other people are saying to know what we're fighting yeah, right, right. and what we're dealing with. So anyway, that's this free press is a good one because it's a Absolutely. very, it gives you the liberal mind, the, the honest liberal mindset. Okay. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, Coleman Hughes, he's a black liberal person writing this, but anyway, so Baird Rustin wrote this in 1965. And so here's what he said. The decades spanned by 19, the 1954 Supreme Court decision on school desegregation, desegregation and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 will undoubtedly be recorded as the period in which the legal foundations of racism in America were destroyed, which is true. So when the, the one thing people don't want to give credit for, though, in 1954 is the fact that Dwight D. Eisenhower, a Republican, was president during during that time when it started, and he's the one that first desegregated the schools mm-hmm. in Little Rock, if you'll remember. Mm-hmm. He's the one that sent the troops to desegregate the first schools in Little Rock, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Okay. He also uh, uh, put together that uh, 1957 uh, so right, so right, 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 yeah. and it was kind of squashed by Johnson, who was like head of the Senate, right. And then later on, Johnson went back in the draw, uh, took that same 1957 uh, Civil Rights Act, and you know just tweaked it, and then came out with the uh, Act of '64. Yeah, right, exactly. That's exactly what happened, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, and so. Uh, the term classical appears especially out for this phase of the civil rights movement, the classical. But in a few years, in the few years that have passed since the first flush of sit-ins, several developments have taken place that have complicated matters enormously. He warns that in response to the magnitude of the obstacles to freedom, most black people still faced militant, a militant, get this. Now, this is the important part because this is what affects us today. Most black people still faced a militant wing of the civil rights movement and began pursuing what he characterized as a no-win tactic. It consisted of shock above all, the hypocrisy of white liberals that must be exposed. These spokesmen are often described as the radicals of the movement, but they are really it's moralist. They seek to change white hearts by traumatizing them. The activists, he wrote, are frequently abetted by white self-flagellants who submitted to the abuse despite knowing there was no plan of tangible institutional reform except to frighten white people into doing the right thing. And this explains exactly what the modern uh, uh, movement is mm-hmm. um you know um oh man I've, I, it's what i'm having one of these moments where i've got 
fire hose trying to go through. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. my mind, my mind right now is a garden hose yeah. with so much stuff trying to come through. Uh, your BLM movement is a prime example. It's this group of black people, ignorant black people, I may add, that are being used by certain whites to try to get these liberal whites mm -hmm. that he's speaking of to do a self-flagellization, mm -hmm. if you, if I may coin a term, mm -hmm. <laughs> self-flagellization, uh, into feeling this guilt and creating this, this guilt to try to punish themselves or other whites for something that's not, and not really achieving anything. Yeah. They're not achieving anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of moving true racial uh, systems, uh, uh, racial, uh, what would you say, racial interaction forward, mm -hmm. they're actually setting it back. Mm -hmm. So, this, I mean, while, I mean, I'll tell you, I have to say, Bayard Rustin was truly, to me, a thinker. Yeah. He was a very, very, he, as it said here, almost, it, it called him the prophet Bayard Rustin, because yeah. he could see what was coming. He, he may have been homosexual, gay, or whatever he was. He was a social mm -hmm. socialist, basically. Mm -hmm. But he had a true vision of what he was trying to do mm -hmm. versus someone coming in and co-opting his vision and turning it in to something totally different. I got a question. Cause this to me is a big deal. Yeah. The whole thing that MLK who's worshiped. Right. Didn't even write his speech. Did he not credit Baird Rustin as the author? No. Then no. he's a plagiarist. But they, well, no, 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 no. That he's not any more plagiarist than than Biden for the speech he gave the other night. You have speech writers. Well, I understand that, and it those, happens all the time. And those people know that they are writing a speech for somebody else to give. They are for hire. Baird Rustin knew, and the people who put it together, including Obama's okay. grandpa, knew that uh, Rustin was writing the speech. For someone else. For someone else. Okay. It, it, was, it was all planned. They, okay. Yeah. Th this was a part of the program. Okay. So this is a little different from some academia stealing some of the right. academics. Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Because what. If you ever look at the, the, uh, uh, the speech, mm -hmm. it says Martin Luther King's blah, blah, blah speech, but it will never say Mark, uh, I have a dream mm -hmm. authored by. Martin Luther King Jr. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's and, a, there's and, a and difference sure. in, you know, mm -hmm. like, for example, mm -hmm. here's, you know, Whitney Houston's rendition of boom or, or so-and-so's rendition of right. God bless America. Yeah. Even though, you know, the somebody Kate, else wrote Kate song. Smith, Kate yeah. Smith has the most famous version, even though Sandy Patty and everybody else in the world uh, may have done it better even than yeah. Kate Smith. I thought Kate actually did write it. I or she, she may have, she may have, but yeah. I'm saying, but Sandy Patty, I know, did a great yeah. rendition of it and so yeah. forth. So uh, Star Spangled Banner, you know, Jimi Hendrix mm -hmm. version, you know. Yeah. So it, it was one of those things. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, so these are the type of things. But anyway, this is, I thought is a great article explaining that even this guy saw what was happening, that the civil rights movement mm -hmm. was being co-opted by radical whites mm -hmm. taking it into a whole another direction from where it should be. Right. And it was not going to turn out how he probably would have wanted to yeah. see it. In, in the speech you never ever want to hear today yeah. is Malcolm X telling blacks, your biggest enemy is the white liberal. And that's what right? he said. The hypocrisy <laughs> of white liberals must be exposed. Yeah. That's what, and Malcolm X was one of the ones who was trying to expose yeah. it, and they killed him for it. I think him and uh, Bill Rustin had a debate one time. Who, Malcolm? Mm -hmm. 
They may have. I don't know. Yeah, I think you could put um, Google at it. I think they had a debate. That would be delicious to listen to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, I guess uh, uh, doing. Uh, oh yeah, just a quick little thing I'll throw out there, and I'll turn mm-hmm. over to you before we get to our guest. Yeah. Uh, we have dueling uh, presidential. Um, uh, gatherings today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Donald Trump is in Rome, Georgia, mm-hmm. and then uh, President Biden is in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be funny right. because uh, Biden will be at some black church mm-hmm. in the black gathering, you know, to get all the homies together, mm-hmm. and uh, then of course Trump will be at some, you know, white gathering. Yeah, and it'll be. It'll be promoted or shown as, you know, Biden, the friend to the black man and, and Trump with his white, you know. Oh, yeah. This is how everything is. Always. It's the urban rural divide. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is kind of a sad thing that that that's what it's come to. That's how it's being positioned mm-hmm. where Biden really I mean, Biden has a, a, a serious black problem mm-hmm. because of his uh, immig- immigrant mm-hmm. stance. Yeah. That's that's creating a problem. Yeah. So anyway, he's got a union problem too. Union, yeah, yeah. he's got he's got yeah, rural white problem. I mean, he's got, he's got problems. Yeah, the only thing he really has, which which I'll skip over my next thing, is the whole abortion thing. Mm-hmm. He essentially the the uh, Democrat Party has made it known that they are the party of abortion. Mm-hmm. They have made that very clear. Mm-hmm. That that is their number one issue because they <laughs> they saw it as winning issue in the midterms, mm-hmm. so they're going to make that their number one issue. Mm-hmm. That and, and man, I would hang that around their neck mm-hmm. so prominently, yeah, and turn it on them mm-hmm. because honestly, uh, if if that's your issue. If that's what excites you to be worried mm-hmm. about taking the life of an unborn child mm-hmm. versus the welfare of the living child. Mm-hmm. In other words, you're you're so worried about what's, you know, the future of an unborn baby versus the future of the ones that are already born and living, which is your the Democrats are destroying the children that are alive today, mm-hmm. but you're going to vote for the party that's destroying the lives of the kids that are alive today yeah. so that, that you can vote for these destroying the kids. You're destroying, you're destroying two sets of lives. Yeah. You're destroying the ones that aren't born and destroying the lives of the ones that are born. I could see that abortion and the immigration thing, I could see connection when it, in terms of black people, because it's almost like we want to get rid of the black population. Yeah. But then that we say that that's not um, capable of taking care of their kids and taking care of their families and stuff like that and they don't want to work. And we're going to replace them with the immigrants. Mm-hmm. So we get rid of 20 million black people since Baby since Roe versus Wade, then we let 20 million people come into the country. Mm-hmm. So we kind of like, who, who, you know, who can take, who, who's going to, yeah, replacement. And these people are going to work and take care of themselves, but they saying that black people can do that. So it's almost like, okay, we don't need you black people. We'd rather have, we'd rather have foreigners come in. And then they're going to come in and they're going to vote for us because we let them in. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's a, to me, it's almost you could see a direct connection between abortion because abortion was targeted mostly yeah. at blacks and immigration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's so true. Both uh, women and blacks are now the disfavored amongst the left mm-hmm. yeah, with the transsexuals, uh, all the transgender stuff. And then now you've got, you know, the things we were harming, especially our urban blue collar people by bringing in these illegal immigrants. I mean, we have to remember, I wish we could see more of the video of the presidential debate 
2020, where Biden says <clears throat> they need to surge the border now. If that is an insurrection, what is? You know, so. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, he, he should be in peace just on immigration alone. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, because if that isn't collusion, if that isn't inciting lawlessness. Yeah. yeah. He's disobeying the Constitution. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So true. Uh, let's see. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's uh, my, okay. my final thing. No, my final thing uh, I want to speak on is the uh, the State of the Union. Yeah, that's a biggie. The we could do the whole show on that. Rage of the, yeah, but why? Yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. He, it, it was basically his campaign speech. It was a political speech. It was a political speech. And it, it was very reminiscent of his uh, emperor speech that he gave, what was it, uh, two years ago or a year and a half? You remember with the, oh, with the, the red lights, in the red back, lights yeah. and where he looked like yes. the Antichrist? The Fuhrer speech. <laughs> yeah, it was very, without that same lighting. Yeah. The beautiful part was with, with uh, Speaker Johnson sitting back there going, Oh God, yeah. <laughs> he looked dour. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, it was better than Nancy Pelosi with her tearing up stuff and doing stuff. You know, he was just rolling his eyes yeah. and just doing this. It was kind yeah. of funny, you know. But uh uh yeah, I mean there were so many lies told. That's yeah. the funny thing. He was just lying his way through it and trying to be smart and they had him jacked full of Happy juice, I oh, guess, yeah. whatever they shoot oh, yeah. him up with, you know. Yeah, it's past four o'clock. He's still awake. It has to be drunk. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm waiting for him to collapse one day uh, from whatever they get. I don't know what they're giving him, a cocktail of some yeah. sort, you know, to keep him on his feet. Yeah. And uh, I, I have a feeling it seems like they may have given him a little too much because he was so amped up. Angry. It, it, well, yeah. 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 And, screaming, shouting. Mm -hmm. And, and but that's also a trait of uh, senility, is they'll cover for it by being angry. So like that's where you get the angry old man. Yes, mm -hmm. that's kind of what you could call it—the angry old man speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the least presidential speech ever for State right. of the Union. Right, State of the Union is the most favorable to any candidate, anybody in office. Uh, you've got all the trappings of power, the pomp and splendor and all this and the parade in. You can't get better than that. It's hard for a guy to fail. Yeah. At that. And, you know, and what's interesting, too, that caught everybody, especially in, in Oklahoma and in Southern California, when he uh, mixed up the name of Lake and Riley for Lincoln Riley. Yeah. He called he called the uh, young lady that was killed, uh, beaten to death by the illegal immigrant. <clears throat> he called her Lincoln Riley. Right. Mm -hmm. And instead of Lake and Riley. Yeah, he proved the point that he has no interest in it. Right. And uh but apparently he's an OU or a USC fan. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he knows Lincoln Riley, you know, yeah. some kind of way he knows Lincoln Riley. But uh but anyway, uh the and people got upset. The Democrats were upset with him because he 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 talked about illegal aliens instead of mm -hmm. uh, undocumented undocumented immigrants. You yeah, know, he talked about illegal. <laughs> so his own side got mad yeah. at him for, and then of course Republicans pounced. Yeah, on I him. have to try that next time I get I find somebody gets pulled over without a driver's license. I'm an undocumented driver. <laughs> yeah, see how that I'm gets, an undocumented yes, driver yes, instead yeah. of an undocumented <laughs> alien. Yeah. Where do I go for sanctuary? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so Dave, what you got? Well, I uh, tell you what, we might have a military base, a navy base in it, Gaza. Oh, I thought you were going to say in Oklahoma. No, in Gaza. <laughs> in Gaza. Yeah, yeah. Now they tried as an airdrop to get relief in just the last few days, and killed five civilians when parachute failed to deploy. <laughs> so. um the question turned into I, a bomb yeah <laughs> landed on a bunch of people yeah sadly and uh my question is is this dock that it's going to be an offshore will it be in international waters or will it be you know just a short jog that if you recognize gaza as a state then you've got an 
na- a military base in this Palestinian state. Yeah. You don't have one in Israel. I know. Yeah, I wonder, too, because the drawing I saw, it actually went all the way to the shore. Mm-hmm. I saw a, a concept of, of drawing of it, and the dock all went all the way to the shore. Yeah. So, I mean, what is it, two miles or three miles international waters? Do you know, Kareem? I'm not I thought it was seven. No, I don't think it's that it's far. It's not that. Okay. I don't think it's that far. I okay. think it's only like two or three miles. Yeah. To your and then there's exceptions such as Istanbul or the Straits of Hormuz, where you got, it's so narrow that there's two bodies could claim it. In fact, that's what's been going on with Iran mm-hmm. is they claim the whole Straits of Hormuz is Iranian waters. I see. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. So I don't know. <clears throat> it's a, uh, you know, this administration, the decisions they're making uh, are just weird. Uh, same, same with the, they're still looking for every way possible mm-hmm. along with Senator Todd Young mm-hmm. of getting us involved in Ukraine. Right. Yeah. The idiots. I mean, they do not, they really do not understand the mm-hmm. danger involved in messing with Putin. Mm-hmm. You know, they're so used to effectless United States government and military mm-hmm. that they think that Putin is bluffing or China is bluffing. I mean, that they, they don't think that they're dealing with real warriors, yeah. people that really, <laughs> when they say they will kill you, they mean they will kill you. Yeah. You know, oh, no, he's just saying that we can, we have the power. We're the United States. No, you have never done anything. You you have never, you know, you've never fought against anybody. Uh, Kareem, I, I, I talked about, you know, street rules mm-hmm. in, in Philadelphia. And, and I'm sure you've seen it in, in St. Louis and East St. Louis in particular, oh, you know. And, yeah. you know, in Philadelphia, we had this thing where uh, you had to call fair one where uh, if you didn't call fair one in a fight, then, you know, somebody could do anything. Yeah. You know, you had to. You might got eight guys at once jumping. You. Exactly. Or, you know, in my case, you know, I'm 11 years old fighting a 15 year old. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know and, and so it was just, but, but these people think that everybody's supposed to fight, but that's how we ended up losing yeah. Vietnam. We were fighting a fair one. And to them, there is no such thing as a fair one. Mm-hmm. It's, you win at any cost. Mm-hmm. It's just winner and loser. Yeah. You know, there and no however rules. you, no, no rules. It's like the WWE. Yeah. You pick up a chair, <laughs> you know, you pick up the next person to you, you throw them out of the ring, whatever, <laughs> jump up on the top and flip on. I mean, it, whatever it takes to win, <laughs> that's what you do. Well, it's worse in WWE because at least Vince McMahon can keep things in yeah, order. Oh, yeah, I them. guess. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, but um, so, I don't know. It's uh, it's gotten to yeah. a point where where we're we're in some serious problems yeah. with. Uh, so I got a couple other things, and I'll try to go through these really yeah. fast. Victor Orban, Prime Minister of Hungary, Hungary, was in has been in the United States here this week. I know Steve Bannon. I guess had a meeting with him, and yesterday he was down in Mar-a-Lago, Trump. So um, my question here is are you going to start seeing an alliance of nationalistic states who are anti-globalist? They aren't against each other, Mm. much like what Trump said when he got elected. You know, it's in the best interest of each of us to make our own nation strong. Right, right. And not necessarily at the expense of anybody else. No. But Trump said, I'm looking out for America's interest here. That's why he renegotiated so many of those treaties successfully. Yeah. You know, so uh, it's interesting to see what's going to happen here. Yeah, you would have Argentina, the new yeah. president of Argentina, yeah. El Salvador, yes. the new El Salvadoran president. Mm-hmm. You would have Victor Orban, mm-hmm. the, the president of Brazil, the former president. Yeah. I can't remember. Former the, president. Yeah. But he's kind of in exile now. If not yeah, changed. yeah. He was in Broken Arrow not long ago. Wow. Yeah, but um, I know his son's been around the states yeah. a lot. And so uh, you, Netherlands has some leaders. Yeah, yeah. 
and but yeah, if you can form this new alliance of of, of leaders that's saying, "Sorry, socialists, we're no longer playing your game," mm-hmm. and create this new alliance and and have them become strong, mm-hmm. because the economy here here's here's this is right up your alley, Korea. <laughs> it's the economies of these uh, Hungary. Mm-hmm. Their economy is strong. They're doing. Our, um, Argentina, their economy is now totally yeah. turned 180 degrees. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's got a long way to go because it was so messed up. Yeah. Um, El Salvador, you see their economy turn around. You see Netherlands become strong again within Europe. If you start seeing these economies start growing and they're becoming the stronger economies, say Netherlands, as small as it is, uh, when I was there, there were only 14 million people. I mean, there were less people there than are in New York City or in L.A. Yeah. But that becomes the strongest economy in, in Europe. Yeah. Somebody's going to say, whoa, whoa, what time I here? What, you know, they're doing something that we're not doing over here. Yeah. It's time to kick you know, Angela Merkel's gang out. And I know she's not no longer the leader, but whoever followed her, we've got to get them out. We've got to get somebody like that. It it can start being a ripple. The the woman, oh yeah, the lady in uh, Italy. Yes, there's another one. She's another one, you know. But if this starts happening, we can reverse the tide. And that, that is what will send Putin a message. Yeah. That, it's these strong economies that can strangle him. You know what? I would say more those strong nationalistic economies, anti-globalism, are more of a friend to him, or at least not a threat to him. That's what I mean to say. Well, right, but it will strangle him economically. It would. It will strangle him economically, but say to him, we are not a threat to you. Right. Militarily, it's, but we're a threat economically. It's more, it's a carrot and a stick. Right, right. Much like what he tried to say to the North Korean dictator. So, you know, we could really help you develop North Korea into a beautiful place. Remember right. the video he started his first summit meeting with them? And, you know, it, so it's, and, and I think it takes both of that, the good cop, bad cop kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, but also, and by the way, I don't know if you've heard this, but there's reports, sightings of British soldiers on the ground in Ukraine now. Well, it could be. It could be. Yeah. It's, they're just stupid. Yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah, they're just pushing it. It, it. It's like the kid with, you know, cross, a, the Three Stooges thing. Mm-hmm. I dare you to cross that line. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. I dare you to cross but that. Orban spoke. That's why I first found out he's in the country, is he spoke. He said, there is no longer a winning strategy for either side in a military conflict here. This needs to stop and go to the conference table and work out a solution so that we can at least have peace, you know, in Eastern Europe. Because, you know, Moscow is actually in Europe, technically, Mm -hmm. you know, the Mm -hmm. geologists would Mm -hmm. tell you. So anyway, uh, that's kind of my headlines. I can't wait to get into our interview. Okay, well, yeah, let's, uh, without further uh, ado, do uh, (laughs) 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 let uh, let me bring in uh, my friend. So you're the alternative to do do. uh, (laughs) Yes, Kareem Abdul-Haq from St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, Kareem, welcome. Welcome. to Tulsa again, you've been here before, but mm. welcome to our show, Fresh Black Coffee, to hopefully wake people up mm. and uh, to some of the perils of what's going on in our country. So, uh, first of all, Kareem, uh, let me let me say a little bit here, which is something that makes you a little bit unusual. Kareem is black and he is Muslim, mm. but he's not a black Muslim. Now, let me sound straight. That sounds like a fun conversation. Yeah. Uh, what's traditionally known as a black Muslim is a member of the Nation of Islam. Uh, Kareem is not a member of the Nation of Islam. He's a traditional Muslim. Am I correct? Correct. Thank you. And so so uh, this is what makes him different from your typical black Muslim. So he is a member of the, uh, of the actual Islamic faith. But at the same time, and being black, he is a 
conservative and a staunch conservative, he, uh, he has invited me. Uh, we became friends several years ago and have communicated uh, <clears throat> online. And when he's come to Tulsa, we've met together. And then he invited me. He had a conservative uh, gathering back in, when was that, in January? Or was it December? Dece uh, December. In December, he invited me to come to St. Louis and take part in this. And it, it was good, and I hope it continues uh, to grow. But it was, because uh, St. Louis is a tough uh, a tough place, and uh, I don't envy you there uh, <laughs> as, a, as a black conservative and uh, trying to make an impact there. But uh, as uh, I thought, it, I actually thought it went very well for a first mm -hmm. first try. I hope mm -hmm. it continues to grow, and uh, that you were encouraged by it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you had another friend of ours from Chicago mm -hmm. come down, Eric uh, Wallace, Doctor Doctor Eric Wallace. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, it, the black conservative movement is growing. It's growing not like a wildfire, but it's slowly starting to take hold as, as a lot of uh, black uh, people are waking up. But anyway, uh, the other thing that sets Kareem apart, he's a, a, a prolific writer. He's an economist. Um, I guess you would call it a, um, as a second career. Uh, are you still working or are you retired now? retired. He's re retired with the U.S. Postal Service, so he has more time to write. The first thing he wrote that I became aware of is a kind of encyclopedia. <laughs> to me, it's called the 13th Amendment Freedom Week mm. book. If you'll hold it up okay. for the people to see, <clears throat> this is a phenomenal read. Yeah. Right yeah. Great. Can, can they see it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it is... Uh, this has more information in it than you'll probably get in most textbooks. And it speaks of the importance of the 13th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. What went into it, the laws leading up to it, uh, everything leading up to the emancipation, and the 13th Amendment essentially is the law that freed slaves everywhere in, but oklahoma <laughs> well right and yeah. and he he has that in there mentions it, right. uh, the the indian territory at the time mm -hmm. they had to sign reconstruction treaties it was two years later they finally freed the last slaves that were owned by indians all of them in oklahoma mm -hmm. yeah yeah dirty yeah. little secret <laughs> well I, I well i guess um it might have been formal but I thought that the um, the last general that surrendered in the Civil War was out of Oklahoma. He was. He was, right. But so, uh, yeah, that but, was hostility stopping. But the actual emancipation had to come through reconstruction treaties because this was autonomous Indian territory mm -hmm. under U.S. protectorate. But yeah, interesting deal. But yeah, because true. I think it was uh, you might, his name, Stan Waitee. Yes. And, You're very correct. Uh, yeah, they 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 signed a um, a treaty. Yes, they did. Um, well, each tribe. Now he was the Confederacy of multiple tribes, so he didn't have authority to speak on all behalf. Mm -hmm. So they had to set up a bunch of them for each tribe that had this as their homeland. The last one was the Osage, and it was get this: the third Monday in January of 1867, which I tried to get our legislature to make a state holiday. Mm -hmm. It's already MLK Day. Mm -hmm. Why not make it Freedman Day in Oklahoma? We could still do that, folks, if they have any guts there. But anyway, that's my little squirrel trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, uh, I just want, you know, as far as Oklahoma, it's very special about that because uh, I know that the last general, they, they, they talk about Texas and General Gordon and, um, and Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. But then they came up here, yeah, uh, June the twenty third, and that's when the uh, yeah, the, 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 the um, waiting. Yeah, essentially, uh, Oklahoma was at war with the United States even after the Confederate States surrendered. We surrendered later here. Okay, I thought they surrendered. Um, okay, that's good information. Yeah, it's it's interesting mm -hmm. because uh, you see, and we aren't taught this. I was never taught it. 
Mm -hmm. You know, and like you, you probably do more educating on your own Mm -hmm. than in in a schoolroom. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the thing they need to understand about this. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm trying. Sorry, I'm busy trying. This is your interview. I'm trying to fight these mics here. In any event, we were talking about the Thirteenth Amendment, Freedom Week. Yeah. And uh, it's it's a very incredible book. Uh, a, a lot that I didn't understand, Kareem, was the fact that your book essentially shows that it was the uh, intent all along <clears throat> when they signed the Declaration of Independence. Mm-hmm. You can see a pattern in there that shows the intent was to free the slaves right from the beginning with, with the various, uh, I, I call them uh, not booby traps, but what would you call them? Uh, 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 mines okay. to go off at, at different times, mm-hmm. you know, like, like the uh, setting it up to where in, uh, what was it? 18, I guess, 1806. Uh, 1806 is when they said the law where we could no longer import. 1808. Was it 1808? 20 years after the Constitution uh, was ratified. Uh, It's in the Constitution that in 20 years time, uh, the um, slave trade would not be uh, protected anymore, that it could be abolished. Right. So Jefferson signed it really in 1807. To be effective the first of uh, <clears throat> January eighteen oh eight. Okay, right, and uh, and and it was actually uh, came with capital punishment. Uh, they 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 attached capital punishment to uh, to the slave trade if you were caught after that. In fact, did you know that uh, the reason I learned this is because my son was in the Coast Guard, or he still is in the Coast Guard, actually, and they used to be the the revenue. Uh, what was it? The revenue, the revenue collectors, or the revenue runners, or something like that, is what the revenue force or something before they became the Coast Guard. And what they would do is patrol the coast along the Atlantic. And what one of the things that they were doing is catching slavers, right? And uh, <clears throat> and that was back in that period from 1808, I guess, all the way up into the emancipation are catching slave traders and and they had all black what we would call today coast guard crews uh doing this mm-hmm. uh so uh, and uh, he sent me he has photos mm-hmm. old photos of these uh i wish i could remember it was the revenue some revenue mm-hmm. force or something before they were called mm-hmm. the uh mm-hmm. Coast Guard. So anyway, but there's so much, so much info yeah. in there. Yeah. Uh, so, but let's let's do this. Explain to us and our listeners and viewers what inspired you to write this. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I've been reading about history, Black history, and the history of America, and I had been reading for years and years and not only um, not in school, but even the black authors, they never did mention or emphasize the 13th Amendment or the 14th or 15th Amendment. And then when I once I um, start understanding them, I'm saying, well, why not? Because these are the most important amendments in in black American history. The, the 13th, the 14th, the 15th uh, Amendments put in the Constitution, they are the most important because the 13th gave us our freedom. The 14th gave us citizenship and the 15th gave us the right to vote and everything that progress we've been making every since that time, right after the Civil War, has been based upon those three amendments. And so I'm saying we should know those uh, more than almost anything else, because that's our foundation. That's what we've been building on. And so the 13th Amendment, most of the black people I talked to, they, know, they didn't know, know what the 13th Amendment was or the 14th or the 15th. And they put in the Constitution specifically for black people because white people didn't need them mm-hmm. during that time. White people was already free. White people was already citizens and white people was already can vote. But it was put in by the Republican Party. And that's why I don't know why the Republican Party don't want to even mention them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but uh, 
but they should be known and black people should understand it. They be wanting to talk about, they want to know their history. Well, why just, I just start seeing that most of the history being taught was all the negative stuff. It's almost like a brainwashing, just trying to just reinforce this victimization mentality. That's all they want to do. Just talk about all the bad stuff that happened. Yeah, this happened. This happened. They go research and find other stuff. Mm-hmm. Bad stuff that happened, but they won't talk about the good stuff mm-hmm. because they want the black people to be have a uh, stay in this victimization. Victim. Yeah. yeah. And because you can control the victim because mm-hmm. the victim is now once you get that victimization mentality, a victim, the uh, uh, way a victim thinks and behaves is a little bit different. I mean, they're always, you know, uh, being angry or being uh, looking for some type of a excuse for their whatever that you know they're not doing. Mm-hmm. Um, they start getting to the point where they want some kind of revenge or somebody owe them something. It's always like uh, or, or excuse for not making progress. But doesn't it also foster perpetual defeatism? Yeah, right. Like Booker T had to deal with that. Yeah, yeah, because that's what a victim. I mean, the the, edu- the the type of history they teach now, and they're trying to put more of it into school with this. Uh, what they call it. Um, yeah. Critical race theory. Oh yes, and they just want. Yeah, they just wants to just continue to make black people think that we victim, we victim, because then we can turn around and just spew out anger and hate and everything. And say, well, I'm justified. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody checks us. We just justify whether right or wrong. This happened to back in slavery, and as long as you keep that victimization mentality, you, you're gonna, you're not gonna really make the progress. You can't free yourself. To, to really be an independent thinker and, and move on out into to, to what you need to do. Because all you can sit back is looking for reparations or somebody to give you something. But it just don't work like that. Uh, so when I start seeing stuff like that, I say, well, and I'm talking with people every day and I'm getting into arguments and debates. And I say, well, you know, let me just write it because I can't, you know, put it in a book and maybe I can reach more people. Mm-hmm. Because this, this, these amendments are too important for us to not know about, especially in the black community. Uh, so, when I start studying it, I start seeing more and more st- things that go, it's connected with that. Like, mm-hmm. um, and and it and it traced it all the way back to the Declaration of Independence. Mm-hmm. Because now I'm studying the whole abolitionist movement, how it started with the Declaration of Independence, and how it moved on up and culminated until the Thirteenth Amendment. But then I had to put in a book and, and explain it to people. This is the type of history we should be learning. Yeah. We should be learning the good stuff. And the uh, and because you got blacks who want to say that the Declaration of Independence, we shouldn't even uh, um, honor that, blah, blah, blah. But the Declaration of Independence was the beginning of our freedom. The Declaration of Independence, we had been, uh, the America had been up under Great Britain for almost 160 years from 1619. Uh, all the way up until the Declaration of Independence. Then they had to fight the war six, about seven, eight years and to, to win. But <clears throat> but so that's when, that's the only time that uh, the colonies were, st- were able to start breaking away and, and getting rid of slavery once they declared themselves uh, free from Great Britain. Because in 1776, when it, the, the Declaration of Independence, less than one year later, some Vermont was the first. It was it was a commonwealth, but it said we were not we're not going to have slavery in Vermont. Mm-hmm. Then Pennsylvania, then Massachusetts, then New York. All of them started, you know, uh, gradually getting rid of slavery. Well, they couldn't do that up under the uh, kings of England. They had to become independent. Not only that, before we had a constitution, just uh, uh, we had uh, the uh, articles con- articles of confederation. Yeah. And the, the founding fathers at that time said that since we, uh, are, you know, have uh, secured this land from Great Britain, this 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 North territories, Northwest, they call it Northwest because it was north of the 13 colonies and it was west. Went all the way back to uh, east of the Mississippi River mm-hmm. and those territories included Ohio. Uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, West, Con- Wisconsin, uh, Indianapolis, uh, not Indiana, Indiana mm-hmm. uh, Illinois, mm-hmm. and parts of uh, Minnesota. 
if it was uh, if it was east of the Mississippi River. Yeah. They're saying that in those Northwest territories, if they ever want to become states, slavery would not be allowed. So this was before we had a constitution. This was, you know, the founding fathers, they had, they saying that this is the vision. We we would love to get rid of it, but it's been imposed on us for 106 years. We can't do it overnight in the colonies, but these new territories, absolutely not. And then they, on top of that, they saw gradually abolishing slavery in their own territories, but it couldn't, didn't happen overnight. So a lot of black people don't understand that, that, that slavery had been around for, since the beginning of, of time almost. And yeah, we had slavery and it was really bad, but we could see that right there is the beginning of, of the almost the end of slavery because America was the first country that actually started doing that, something like that. The founding fathers. Let, let me ask you this though. Uh, so, we are the first ones that started in 1776. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mo moving towards it. Mm -hmm. But we have Wilberforce in England because they actually uh, passed it in 1806, I believe, <clears throat> in England where they abolished slavery in, in England. Okay, maybe in England, but I'm just, but this was before that. Right, well, well, yeah, but we still officially had it until 1865. Right. We didn't, we didn't, we, we, we down the, England also abolished slavery in the, uh, um, the islands in the uh, 1830s. But I'm just saying we started it and it was easy for them to do it because these were islands that was distant from England. Slavery was right in the middle of our everyday life in America. And was it was it was uh, it wasn't as easy to do it. Yeah, one of the keys was the delayed activation date. It was in the Constitution, for instance, the importation of chattel slaves. Yes. They delayed the activation date mm -hmm. so that you know it was kind of like the the deficit spending we're having right now. Your kids will pay the bill, mm -hmm. right? They said to the southern plantation owners, okay, you still get it, but your kids are probably going to have a limitation on how many more they can ship in. Right, right. So everything was gradual. Yeah, everything was gradual. They, because they knew that after 160 years, it was entrenched. Mm -hmm. And in yeah, it, it was entrenched. So everything had to be, you know, strategized. Yeah. But the goal, the end goal was to, to, to eliminate it. Yeah. OK. And 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 after the after the um, United States started eliminated, then other countries start doing it, you know, like Wilberforce and all. They came after uh, after the Constitution. They came after the, the uh, uh, um, Declaration. Yeah, Declaration of Independence. Right. It came after the Northwest Ordinance. It right, came right, after right. all this. It came after the uh, ending of the slave trade because England. They was always competing with the United States because, to be honest with you, slavery ended in America in 1808, mm -hmm. but it ended in the slave trade, I mean, right. in 1808, but right. legally slave trade. Right, the importation. Yeah, yeah but it didn't really ended. end until 1862 with Lincoln. Right. Because right. he was the one that killed the allowed the first slave trader to be executed. It, the, the person was Nathaniel Gordon. And that was back in 1808. No, what I'm saying is, like you were saying, the, 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 the law, we, we banned the importation of slavery back in 1808. Yeah, legally. Right. But illegal slave trade was going, illegal slave trade was going on up until 1862. Right, right. Okay. Uh, illicit trade, 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 trade. Can I ask? This is just a little aside from that. When you ban importation, wouldn't that have had the economic effect of incentivizing breeding programs? Yeah, it it had. Um, um, it's you know, but but they still had illicit slave trade. Yeah, but 
some of that, all, all that happened. I mean, during the slave uh, slavery in America, you had some uh, all kind of stuff going on like that, uh, breeding uh, plantations and stuff. Kind of, kind of like the sex trade going on right now. Yeah, yeah. So people, they, 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 they did all kind of stuff like that. But uh, I guess what I'm just trying to say is that <clears throat> when I start studying this, I say, hey, I'm, I'm, a, I, I, this is information I have been reading, but nobody will even try to explain. Everything was geared to. To to just to perpetuate this victimization mentality, and at the same time to 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 make America even seem worse than what it is. Instead of correcting it, they just want to just say America is the worst place because of that than ever. Right. Uh, even though slavery had been going on. Uh, for, uh, for uh, you know, from all around the world for right. a long, long time. From the time of yeah. Abraham, yeah. As, as, at least. As we know. Let, let me ask you this then. Uh, let's move from the 13th Amendment to, to ending slavery to the 14th Amendment. Mm-hmm. What do you say, well, first of all, what was the, again, the purpose of the 14th Amendment? Well, it's to keep Trump from Wait. running for office. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's a, that's that's about as good as any other explanation. That no, but the the real explain the the original and true purpose of the Fourteenth Amendment because it, it, it it's kind of like the a grab bag of amendments that people have just kind of thrown anything in there. You know, just it it fits anything we want it to be. Well, yeah, the Fourteenth Amendment, you know. <clears throat> After Lincoln was assassinated, he had pushed the 13th Amendment. And the, um, he was assassinated. Uh, he was shot on April the 4th. I think he passed away on April the 15th. Back up a little bit to my, yeah, Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he passed up. He passed away on April the 15th. So Johnson took over. Now, Johnson was a Democrat. Mm-hmm. And that's the way they did it back then. But Johnson was a Democrat, and he didn't favor all the stuff that the Republicans were doing. That's why he got rid of the uh, 40 acres and a mule and uh, of Treatment's Bureau. And he 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 really attacked the 14th Amendment. He didn't want the 13th to... Or the 14th? the 14th. He couldn't yeah. stop the 13th. Okay. The 13th was... was right, so what, what was the... Well, let's go back to the 14th. Okay. Um, what was the purpose of the 14th? The 14th, the 14th Amendment was to uh, give black people citizenship and do due process of law. Because, see, what happened, the Klan had, the Klan had been um, uh, started by the ex-Democrat uh, Southern uh, general, uh, military people. And they, w- and they would go and they would... You know, they would terrorize, terrorize and hang people and do stuff without any type of due process, without any type of, of laws or anything. So you see in the 14th Amendment <clears throat> that, hey, you just can't do that. You got to have some due process. You got, you know, whatever that is, needs to be. And not only that, it's a lot of things in that 14th Amendment. And this is where they're saying that the people after the war was over with, a lot of the people that pledge uh, uh uh, the officers and 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 uh, that pledge support and allegiance to the Constitution and everything. Since they rebelled against it, they wouldn't be able to hold office and stuff like that. And that's why they were trying to put uh, uh, mix that up with Trump. But the fourteenth, it was mainly about giving black people citizenship and due process of law. So that was that was the express purpose wasn't it to give black people citizenship yeah if you're born if you're born and naturalized or, or, or in a, a citizen in america you're automatically citizen. right so, so wait the power is here yeah so 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 what, what i'm getting is it was never intended to just let people come to america have babies here and automatically mm. give them citizenship no because later uh uh they it didn't it didn't include the Indians because later uh, they put a, a, a some more legislation saying that Indians would be citizens. So so even they, Indians at that time weren't right included under the Fourteenth Amendment. Right, right. Because yeah. they weren't subject to the powers there. That's the clause they used. Right. Those came to take Greenwood the floor. He stayed and was an American. And in fact, one of Jefferson Davis' best friends 
in the Mississippi Senate. Mm-hmm. And he was the head of the Choctaw Nation. But he gave that up when he said, I'm not going to Oklahoma with the rest of you Choctaws. Mm-hmm. Right. So, but, okay. right. But keep keep the, the thought. And diplomats, they, 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 they are immune from that. Right, right. When the people come over here, they... Right. Or, what I'm specifically yeah. getting at, though, is what's happening. So, for example, right now the we've got thing, these right. millions of immigrants coming in, illegal aliens, I'll call them. They're coming in. And of course, if we've had 10 million come in out of 10 million, say 5 million are, are fertile women and they have babies now mm-hmm. and they all will have at least, say, one. So which means we'll have 5 million more. Mm-hmm. Uh uh, and so then they will claim that those children are, are citizens and then anchor babies, yeah. anchor, anchor babies. And because of that, then their mothers and mm-hmm. relatives will all have a key to getting into America. The 14th Amendment was never intended for that. Mm-mm. Right. So that's that's what I'm trying to get at, people, that the Democrats have twisted an amendment they fought against initially. They never wanted this amendment because it applied to giving citizenship to freed slaves, to black Americans. And now they've taken that same amendment and twisted it to another purpose to give them power again by numbers. And that's the whole reason that they're fighting so hard for these things, to give them numbers, votes and just power in numbers. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So 15th Amendment, what is the the purpose of the 15th Amendment? Well, the 15th Amendment was to give uh, um, uh, black men a right to vote. It was the 19th Amendment that gave all women a right to vote. Because even with the 15th Amendment, white women couldn't vote. They could but or couldn't? Couldn't. Okay. So the 15th, so 19th Amendment. 19th gave all women the right to vote. Yeah. He guaranteed it. Yeah. Some states gave it before mm-hmm. then. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and even before the 13th Amendment and before the 14th Amendment, some states allowed freedom, mm-hmm. you know, before the 13th Amendment. Right. But this this was this was the Constitution. It was all put in the Constitution for the whole land. To guarantee. Yeah. And, and some people allow some blacks to vote uh, but, and um, and be citizens of certain states. You know, some states was more advanced, but it wasn't it wasn't nationwide. So. The Republicans have put that in there uh, for black people, uh, the 13th, 14th, 15th. Then, and then the Democrats, especially the ones in the South, fought against it for almost 100 years, up until the 1960s. And, and, and then... Different things like uh, poll tax. Poll I mean, tax. Te- tests. Uh, yeah. they, they had the uh, tests, uh, too, that you had to take. Uh, yeah, uh, all those type of things. Um, uh, but they put in the gr- grandfather clause and stuff. For them, you know, but um, uh, what I was, um, but yeah, those kind of things, part of history that's not being taught, and and I don't know why, but they're just not being taught. So I I just I wrote a book about them because now, not only that, the Thirteenth Amendment to me is more important than all the other amendments. Mm-hmm. It could it's an argument could be made that the thirteenth amendment is the most important amendment in the constitution. It should have been in, in the constitution even before amendment, but we know the, the circumstances of the day. But you got no matter what you do, you got to have freedom first. Mm-hmm. It should be for everybody. The thirteenth amendment is the first time in American history that everybody legitimate uh everybody the uh, law abiding citizen is free. Mm-hmm. The very first time. Out of all this, through through uh, the time of Great Britain, uh, the, 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 everything, it, everything, it, it was the Thirteenth Amendment, the first time in American history that everybody was uh, 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 law abiding citizens was free, and that's why we. I wrote the book. That's why I say we should celebrate freedom in America based upon the Thirteenth Amendment, because the Thirteenth Amendment was actually in slavery. Anything else before that, we celebrate freedom based upon that is it's not accurate. It's not enough because now you celebrate freedom at this time and this time and this time, even though those times were important. The the end po- is the most important. It's like you don't play a, a, a ball game and start celebrating before the game over with. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, then you end up losing. 
now you people are celebrating before the 13th Amendment and a lot of people still not getting educated. They still getting deceived. They still uh, lost. Now, so, now the 13th Amendment, to, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it, uh, freedom, you've, now you celebrate freedom. We don't have a time in America that everybody's celebrating freedom. We have a time where everybody celebrate independence and Independence Day. But freedom is more important than independence. Mm, mm. A, a nation, you have a lot of countries today celebrate independence, all in the Caribbean, African, everything. But the people in those countries, they have a certain amount of independence, but they don't have freedom because the people are still up on the dictatorships, they're up on the tyranny, they're up on all that kind of stuff. Yeah, independence day is freedom for the ruling class, isn't it? Right, yeah. right. So if we had a time we celebrate freedom, even in America, when we celebrate independence, we only talk about that little era of 1776. And then that's it. But we don't learn much else about the country because we wasn't even a country at the time. Mm -hmm. We just declared ourselves independent. We didn't have a constitution. We didn't have a Congress. We didn't have amendments like 13, 14, 15 men. We didn't have none of that. So now we're not even talking and learning about that. Mm -hmm. But when we celebrate the 13th Amendment, then it takes us all the way back how it all evolved. Mm -hmm. It goes all the way back. Now we can celebrate, we can study all of it because it includes the uh, Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. It, 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 to me, it, it, it really also makes Juneteenth kind of silly. I mean, because, it, because if you look at Juneteenth, which is like one day when a message got to one particular locality, Right. In one state. I mean, it's not only one location, it's one town Unintended. in the entire nation yeah. <clears throat> that, you know, and everybody's supposed to be excited about that when that wasn't even the last place. As we said, Oklahoma mm -hmm. actually was the last place to to get the word and, and to get actually become free. Yeah. Uh, then then it kind of negates Juneteenth, whereas what was it December 13th? of uh, 1865 when the last uh, treaty was signed with the um, uh, general here in Oklahoma. That I think was it, June, wasn't it? No, Stand I think. Waiting. Yeah, that was, that was December. Oh, uh, December. No, that was, uh, that was just June 23rd. Oh, it was June 23rd. But see, dude, this, is what, this is what happened, is that the, but the June 23rd of a uh, year later? No, the same year. Oh, the same year. Yeah. Okay. And then the, the, the uh, 13th Amendment came in December, six months later. Oh, okay. Because the, 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 the difference between Juneteenth and the 13th Amendment Freedom Week movement, and we celebrate um, uh, freedom based upon the 13th Amendment, which was ratified December 6, 1865. Now, we, the 13th Amendment uh, celebration is based upon the Constitution of the United States. Okay. Juneteenth is based upon the Declaration of Independence. No, I'm no, sorry. No, Emancipation, it's, it's Emancipation Proclamation. Proclamation. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Which the was actually two years. Yeah, two early. years before, but the Emancipation Proclamation and the, 30, uh, 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 um, the Constitution, the Emancipation Proclamation is executive order. Thank you. I was just going to okay. ask that. Okay. It's executive order by President Abraham Lincoln. One man did that. Mm -hmm. oh, thank God. Mm -hmm. But one man did that. He did it. He issued it September 22nd, 1864, saying that if you don't come back into the union, talk about those states 100 days from now. It was 61, actually. Huh? 1861, because that's what started the war. No, 1862. He issued the Emancipation Proclamation September 22nd, 1862, and said 100 days from now that it's going to be in effect if you don't come back, which would be January 1st, 1863. And unless he lived in Kentucky or Maryland. Now, now, but it only it not well, we're actually happening over it, it dates only, now, it only covered the we're states that were rebelling. It didn't cover the slave states that didn't rebel. That's the point. And the slave states that right. didn't rebel was Missouri, right. where I live, Kentucky, Delaware, Maryland, and New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say New Hampshire because they didn't officially end slavery. Uh, uh, like that. So it didn't cover those states. Yeah. So those states fought with the North against the rebellion states. Yeah. Okay. Then when West Virginia came into the Union, it didn't cover that. Right. It only covered the states that were rebelling. Right. It so that meant that even after the the uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the 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 Confederate states start start uh, surrendering, the general start surrendering, mm -hmm. you still had some of those slave states. That didn't surrender. That 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 the Thirteenth Amendment 
ended uh, slavery in those states. So to say that Texas or, or Juneteenth is, 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 uh, represent the uh, end of slavery is not true, yeah. historically, no kind of way. It's it's really a Texas holiday. They made it a national holiday. Exactly. Okay. Thank but, you, James Langford, right? But, <laughs> but, but we do need a national holiday to celebrate freedom, and it should be the 13th Amendment. I agree. The I 13th Amendment yeah. is it, it, a constitution. You, you celebrating the, uh, an executive order, mass page proclamation, which was all of us, all of us connected, and they all of us important. The mass page proclamation was very important. Go ahead. There's only one problem that I see with. Uh, the 13th Amendment being celebrated as a national holiday or the 13th Amendment Freedom Week. And that is, it's so close to Christmas. No, no. <laughs> no, you're being practical. I am being practical. I, I, you know, seriously, <clears throat> I would love nothing more than to see it celebrated. It's just like Hanukkah. I think Hanukkah should be celebrated. You know, I think... And now, if we could figure out how to celebrate it without making it a week off, like everybody would like want to do, for it. government workers, <laughs> we, we, for we, government we, workers, we, yeah, we're not gonna make it a week off. Work? No, it's one day. You just want to see it uh, honored, right? Right, and um, okay. It's part of the school year, even though it's at the end of the school year. But some of this, if, if, if some things that they could do, but the, the thing is educate. Yes. We got to educate. Freedom is so important that that you know, I mean, we we, we can't ignore it. And I'm and like you say, maybe it w- would have been better if it was in another month. But it's right between Thanksgiving and Christmas. No, I, listen, I'm on your side. I would love to see it. Now, honestly, if we could make it um, an educational emphasis week, in other words, not making it, let's say, uh, a work holiday or anything. So let's say you, you introduce it into schools where schools take a week to um, emphasize it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where kids are taught yeah, about the importance. An hour to a day at schools. Exactly. Um, I, I'm just saying the the um, the hoops you would have to jump through to make it a holiday, or so because you know you've already got one. I'm sure you're going to love Kwanzaa. <laughs> uh, you know you got you're competing with Kwanzaa. You're competing with Christmas, Hanukkah. Uh, uh, Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs> uh, no, nah, but uh, so I'm just looking at the practicalities. So, no, I totally agree with you that somehow we need to reinstitute and reemphasize the importance of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. I'm just saying, as far as it, it, maybe I need to ask you, what is your goal? What is your end goal for the 13th Amendment Freedom Week? Is to emphasize those three amendments. But the 13th Amendment is just a launching pad to teach all about the concepts of the principles of freedom. Right. So, so, so are you looking, are you envisioning a holiday or... Or would you uh, be satisfied with making it an emphasis in schools? I would like for it, you know, I would like for it to be, you know, a holiday. But the main thing, whether it's a holiday officially or not, I would like to see people recognize and see the importance of it. Because if we don't understand freedom, we're going to lose it. And we are losing it. Amen. And and so Amen. everything else we'll be talking about ain't gonna won't mean much at all. Because uh, what what it what was um, they used to say that uh, eternal vigilance is the price we pay for um, liberty. Okay, 
we the, 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 a, a, a cultural celebration like the 13th Amendment Freedom Week, you can trans trans you can um you can trans um for all kind of information doing something like that. These in the schools, the, the people, a culture celebration, you can, you can learn in, in, in uh, cultural events. It'll be a culture. You, you just won't be like some of these events they have, you know, I'm not a, I'm, I don't want to be putting down Juneteenth or something, else, but it's just like, you just go and party and everything. You go home. You don't learn nothing. But the 13th Amendment, we always, like you saw, we, we have uh, uh, panel discussions, we teach, and, and, and you, people will learn. They learn a lot more in that, in that little event that they probably learn some, a lot of stuff they never learned before. You know, but we can constantly do that. But the freedom, we got to understand freedom. And that's why the freedom movement, it, 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 we don't really get into politics so much. Because anybody that loves freedom could be a part of this 13th Amendment Freedom Week movement, whether you're Republican, Democrat, uh, constitutionalist, uh, libertarian, whatever. It don't matter if you really love freedom. And see, then we don't have to be arguing about, you know, once you start saying, well, this is a political movement, then you got division and, and arguments. It, it doesn't matter what religion you're in. Uh, it doesn't matter what race you're in. If you love freedom, this is for you. And then everything else will start working itself out little by little because as people are start understanding freedom more, then uh, it start giving them more clarity, giving them understanding. And then then you will see that it it, it, it helped to unite the, uh, the, uh, the, the population and the community rather than divide it. Because, you, you, you know, and we say that what we want to do is teach people about the Constitution because a lot of our problems today are because we're not following the Constitution. A lot of the problems today yeah. is that we're not following the Constitution. And, um, but but the 13th Amendment is part of the Constitution, 14th Amendment, 15th Amendment, because you can start teaching kids this. If they've been taught the Bill of Rights, they the first 10 amendments, right? Mm -hmm. Then you say, okay, this is 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. Now you know half the Bill of Rights, um, um, half the amendments, because it's 27, right? Then you know the one to 19, you know more than half the uh, 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 amendments to the Constitution. So kids say, well, I already know half the amendments to the Constitution because it's easy to put them together. Mm -hmm. But we have to have people that that see the vision, to yeah. say that that that... We we want America to be strong. We want we want people to understand the Constitution because if you don't understand the Constitution, like you're a religious person, some people say that I'm religious, but they don't even study the Bible. The, the, you might say the Bible is the greatest book in the world, but if you don't know it and understand it, then then you you you, you know you just at a well, disadvantage. Let me, let me go on that. You as a <clears throat> a devout uh, Islam, uh, whether you, I mean, we all appreciate the prophet Isaiah, right? Mm -hmm. Isaiah talked about declaring the day of liberty. Jesus quoted him when he went to the temple. He said, I'm here to proclaim liberty to the mm -hmm. captives. Moses mm -hmm. was about deliverance and liberty. Right. So I would say the great religions of the world have a vested interest in duty to the principle of liberty. Right. And so to leave them out of this is not to deliver the whole package. But it's in liberty. You, we're not leaving religion out. Yeah. We're saying that it don't matter what religion you eat. I'm in. just saying it's another venue yeah. to deliver. No, he, he's saying in the back, he's saying to leave liberty out of religion versus yeah. leaving religion out of liberty. Yeah. Is what he's trying to say. yeah your faith supports the concept of value of yeah. liberty. And I tell and, people, even with Muslims, I tell Muslims, I say, look, so some Muslims have a problem with the accept part of the 13th Amendment. Uh, you know, where they say accept those who <clears throat> uh, uh, do, uh, duly convicted of a cr cr uh, criminal offense, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that um, the 13th Amendment that was put together by the founding fathers. And it wasn't just the 13th Amendment, wording of the 13th Amendment. This wording was put in the, um, this same wording was put into the- uh, The Bill of Rights, right? No, no. It was put into the uh, Northwest Ordinance. Mm -hmm. 
But the Northwest Art is read almost the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, here it is. <laughs> the Northwest Art is read like this. It says, this is Northwest Art. This is mm-hmm. 1787. Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude in said territory. Mm-hmm. It don't say uh, United States. It say said territory. I'm talking about otherwise than in the punishment of a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted. Yes, due process of law. Yeah, duly convicted. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of Blacks wants to, because we still have this victimization mentality, we want to we want to um, c- condemn everything. Mm-hmm. So they still want to say, well, that's, that, that's why Black people are in prison today. Yeah. You know, and I'm saying, no, no, no. Uh, be, if you're duly convicted, they say that you had convict leasing uh, back in the day. They used to just pick people up for petty stuff. You know, they create these petty laws. They pick them up and make them, put them on forms, make them work. Mm-hmm. And they call it convict leasing. They would lease them out. They take the convicts mm-hmm. and lease them out to to yeah. government officials or private industry and make them work. And they pay off the they they look dead. Yeah, but they wasn't duly convicted. A lot of them was can't recourse. They didn't have a jury. Yeah. They didn't have a, a legal representation. They didn't have um, um, witnesses. They didn't have none of any of that stuff. So it wasn't duly right. I'm just convicted. saying the Seventh Amendment, the Bill of Rights, says the exact same thing. Right. It applies to everybody. Right. Right. So it's it's one standard for everybody, right? Right. But that that wording that wording that's in the Thirteenth Amendment it goes all the way back to seventeen eighty seven, and then even uh, Lincoln he issued a Emancipation Proclamation to Washington D.C. in the same year he issued the the, the one we're talking about. Uh, that was for uh, April the sixteenth. Hmm. That's where the, they um, freed all the slaves in Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. and the same wording. The same wording was was there. It says that uh, uh, this was uh, in in D.C. It say neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except for crimes whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall thereafter exist in said district. Yeah. So that wording has been around for before the Constitution. Sure. And now it's in the th- come is coming into the Thirteenth Amendment. Right. And so uh, it wasn't. You know, it was it, it was something that's very important that we need to know and, and we need to learn about and celebrate freedom. Because if you don't, if we don't celebrate freedom, all our other rights, religion and everything right now is attack on freedom of speech, saying that this council, you're just going to cancel people out and, and make them lose their job and do this because they might say something that other people might not like. They might say, oh, he used the word homosexual. You know, mm-hmm. uh He's homophobic. You know, he 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 shouldn't say that. You know, he's, you know, cancel culture. Yeah. <laughs> so now let's take him off the air. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's make him lose his job. Mm-hmm. So freedom of speech is being uh, 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 at risk right now. But, you know, it's, it's always things like I tell the Muslims, I say, look, if we, every religion, if they had the 13th Amendment as part of the, the scripture, a lot of the slavery that exists in the world wouldn't have never been. Yeah. See, you know, no, there's no slavery or involuntary servitude at all, mm-hmm. except for punishment of crime mm-hmm. and, uh, or, and duly convicted, mm-hmm. you know, not just, you know. Mm-hmm. And so if, if everybody was following that, that would have solved a lot of yeah. problems. And then there's the scripture in the Bible that a lot of people look over. It's, um, it's um, what is it? Exodus. Exodus 21, 16, it said, anyone who, who kidnaps someone is to be put to death, whether the victim has been sold or is still in the kept kidnapper's position, possession. Uh, uh, that was, uh, then King James verse said, and he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. So, so slavery is like, uh, kidnapping. kidnapping. It's like, you know, stealing. It's like, you know, so, it, it, yeah, it's like putting to death. Yeah. You know uh, what I'm saying? Now that's forcible. If a person's a bond servant, a contract, I will serve yeah. you for so many. That's different. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Yeah. Because see, I tell everybody that, that um, <clears throat> you know, like 
we have to develop an economic system. I call it a free market system. I don't even call it capitalist, but a free market system where now you have manufacturers, you have people that create jobs for people to work. Before then, they didn't have all that, so they would needed something done. They they make people they make people slaves and get the work done. Or apprentices. That was another yeah. They did they they, they they evolved too. That's what I wanted to do. Um, get to your other books. Yeah. We're going to jump real quick. Yeah, from, we should, yeah. We've beaten this horse a bit. But listen, I really do, and we'll get to an address where you can get this book. I guess you can get it on Amazon, too. Yeah, they don't wherever Amazon, yeah. The, the 13th Amendment Freedom Week Manual is the name of the book. And seriously, you really need to get it. it oh, we've awesome. just scratched the surface of the information you will find in this this book. It, it's unbelievable. Uh Seriously, we haven't even scratched the surface on information history of the U.S., the uh, Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the amendments, all of this. It's uh, the founding fathers. There's Mm -hmm. amazing stuff in that book. So you should get it. Seriously, it's like an encyclopedia. But Kareem, so you've written some other books. Now, your your passion is economics or as some people call it, economics. Mm -hmm. Uh, So. Uh, tell us a little bit, bit about some of your other books. Okay. Well, <clears throat> and I just came out with another book, but it's I don't have it with me. But this book here is called The Relationship Between Government, Economics, and Freedom. Okay, there is a relationship. And I break down the different forms of government. And I break down the different types of economic system. <clears throat> so when I break them down, I explain them all. Then I say, well, you got to have the right economic system to match with the right form of government in order to get the most amount of freedom. And what are the different types of the, economic systems? Well, <clears throat> it's, I, I'm going to start with the government. Five forms of government that's always existed. I don't care what name you give them, but these are forms, not names. That's monarchy, where one person rule. Oligarchy, where a handful of people rule. Democracy, where the majority rule. Republic is where a thing, not people, but a thing rules. And that thing is law. Mm-hmm. Then you have anarchy, where you have autonomous rule, where individuals or little clans or little family, you know. Jungle rules, they yeah, call it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So every government going to fall upon one of those five forms. So you got to, people in those in, in those societies got to decide whether they want a monarchy, an oligarchy, a democracy where the majority of people rule, uh, or a republic where the law rules, or just no government at all. Mm-hmm. OK, and sometimes they go through cycles. But the reason why they go through cycles is because people forget to, and understand the forms and they just keep searching. But anyway, the economic system. So like <clears throat> I call it free market. People call it capitalism, uh, fascism, uh, uh, Nazism, um, socialism. And communism. It's kind of tricky because some of those are shades of one another. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like socialism in general, on prop, I say, well, Nazism and uh, fascism, mm-hmm. they shades of socialism. Yep. You know, uh, and then communism, you know, they all related. Those three. Yeah. Try to overlap. Yeah. But People don't I was talking my book that some people don't understand another system that's the the mother of uh, the socialism and and all that and that was called mercantilism. Hmm. Mercantilism was the type of system that was before the free market. Hmm. Karl Marx, not Karl Marx, but Adam Smith, who's considered the father of capitalism. Yes. I don't even say capitalism. Wealth of nations. I say, I say, yeah, I say the free market and free trade. Capitalism, didn't, the word capitalism didn't come along to Marx now. Oh, okay. They termed it capitalism. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't use it. Oh, How okay. you going, my enemy going to define me? Okay. He's, that's <laughs> a capitalism, brilliant point. Capitalism, capitalism, capitalism. Right. It's so distant. Capitalism. Bourgeois. So yeah. <laughs> capitalism is. It's always negative. Okay. And then we turn around and adopted what the enemy wanted to say about it. Oh, yeah, we capitalists. 
Okay. I say free market. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Domestically and free trade internationally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but mercantilism. The, mercantilism was a system that existed during the slave trade, colonialism, and everything for about three or four hundred years. Karl Marx wrote the book Wealth of Nations to attack a mercantilism. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait, Karl Marx wrote the book? You mean Adam, Adam Smith, Adam Smith, Smith wrote, wrote Wealth of the Wealth of Nation. Nation. Um, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, everybody. But <laughs> we Adam told Smith. you to abbreviate this, but that's <laughs> yeah. too much. Yes. Adam Smith wrote the book, and he, what he was writing about was attacking mercantilism. Okay. Yeah, how do you distinguish that from free market? Well, mercantilism was uh, part of colonialism and imperialism. Imperialism is when you have uh, the political... Uh, aspect of it. Oh, the king kind of owns. Yeah, mercantilism yeah, is the economic aspect uh, aspect of the merchants, and then colonialism is what they use to go and get resources from other countries. Yeah, they, or the they, government. Yeah, the they colony and they colonize and they take the resources, bring it back to the mother country, and then they would have uh, 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 manufacturing merchants and manufacturing, mm. and then they would manufacture in in, in uh, the uh, um. The, the the raw materials, you know, and finished products, and they would sell them back to the co- colonies. Yes. And they would tell the colonies that they were a colony of England or a colony of uh, France or a colony of G- Germany or whatever, and they couldn't they couldn't buy from the other uh, uh, mother countries. They had to go through like it was English. They had to come. They had to buy everything through England. They couldn't they couldn't go to France and buy nothing. Wasn't that what the War of 1812 was partly about? And that was let's, also let's get too far that, that, was, just... that was also the Revolutionary War because they said that we're making ourselves independent. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to trade with, we're going to have free that's trade. What, we're yeah. going to trade with France. We're going to yeah. trade with this country yeah. and everywhere else. And that's what they started doing. That's when free trade, because that's what Adam Smith was saying. It should have been free trade in the first place. That's why I said okay? that, yeah. And yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> so, so that's why it's free trade. But, but the thing is that those European nations, they they recognized this and they did free trade among themselves, but they still had that mercantilist, mercantilist mentality. Yeah. So even after the uh, we got independence over here and started the free trade, they went to Africa and colonized them and started taking their resources. So it was still mercantilist. They they stop. They it's still mercantilism mm-hmm. because it's like you go and and take people uh, uh, stuff. Raw materials, and you bring it to the country. We got the we got all the uh, the machinery and stuff to to make stuff, and then we sell it back to you. Mm. So, so to a certain extent, they were doing free trade, but to a certain extent, with the other c- countries in the world, they were still a mercantilist wow. uh, philosophy. Okay, and 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 so so we've covered. What are the others? Oh, so you got oh. mercantilism. Yeah, mercantilism was like the mother of socialism and communism and all of that. But so you got the free market. Right. If you understand the free market, that's what we should. You got to put the right economic system with mm-hmm. the right form of government. Right. So you have to have limited government with free market. So the 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 uh, republic, which is the law, like the constitution, limits the government. Mm-hmm. It binds it down, right? So that saying Congress should not do this, Congress should not do this. So everything is limited. Then the people have more freedom. Mm-hmm. Okay. The more government you have, the, the the less people have freedom. To the time you get to totalitarian government, then people don't have no freedom. Mm-hmm. So what we're saying here is that the right form of government that goes with a free market system is limited government, constitutional yeah. government, and then you have reform, and then the people have freedom. You have prosperity. Mm-hmm. And is okay. this, and this is kind of what what Donald Trump was trying to return us to. What well, to say. So, so a certain extent, but right now, America and the rest of the world is we 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 in a bind, <laughs> and 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 I don't see bind. no way out of it. I really don't see no way out. I don't. I can't say that like any president can change it because <clears throat> we're in. A, it started. In, it started in 1913, and through all these presidents, it's covered with the Federal Reserve Bank. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the income tax. I have a feeling we need they to bring it right back. Yeah, for, no, it's <laughs> about controlling the currency. Yeah, they come out the Communist Manifesto. 
this is why I explain this book here is the free market manifesto. We could spend all weekend with this guy. I guess yeah, this, this, uh, this another is whole show stuff. on this stuff. The, the, the free market manifesto is a is a is a is a is an answer to the communist manifesto. And uh so and I, so it started in 1913. Yeah, which, so how did we how did we get there? We incorporated uh the uh the Federal Reserve Banking System, and who, and and they, they call it a uh, fractional reserve banking. Is uh, that from J.P. Morgan? Well, the president at the time was uh, um, Woodrow Wilson, right? right. Yeah, Wilson, but I mean, but but <laughs> yeah. was it working yeah, with J.P. Morgan, Jekyll Island, and all that stuff? They led up to all that. Yes, yeah, the Rockefeller and Morgan both. I think, yeah. yeah, but once they established that Federal Reserve Banking System, now you have. Uh, a situation where you have fractions, you ended up with fractures of banking. Now they created a paper, but at the one, as, as they develop one piece of paper, is supposed to be, re, if you have paper, it should be 100% redeemable in the wealth that it's supposed to represent. Yeah, like I used to have as a kid silver certificates. Mm -hmm. That was a dollar bill, but it was redeemable at the bank for silver. Right. Right. And, and they, they banned all, it in the in the sixties. They took all that stuff redeemable away and said now it's legal tender for all debts private and public. But it, but it but 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 it it doesn't redeem any real wealth. Mm -hmm. The only thing you can do is get another paper dollar just like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, but <laughs> not no real wealth. And then not no gold, not no silver, none of that. Mm -hmm. So now what <clears throat> what I'm just saying is that this has been going on for so long. That's why we're in $35 trillion worth of debt. Plus, we have unfunded debt. Mm -hmm. You know, prom uh, uh, debt that's, 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 we promised, like Social Security and, 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 uh, uh, Medicare. Medicare and all that, Medicaid and all that stuff. This, this is in the future, you know, that, that, that that's yeah. going to have to be paid. Yeah. But we don't have the, the real wealth for that. Yeah. And the, the way they did with the Federal Reserve Bank is that they said that the banking system, the Federal Reserve Bank, is the only one that can issue money, which is unconstitutional. Sure it is. So if they the only source that money issue and they loan out a certain amount of, of money collectively, if you gave them back that money, they're going to say, good. But where is the interest that you promised to pay? And they're going to say, well. You the only one to issue money. We don't have any more money face value that we could give you because we gave it back. The interest can never be paid off because they're, what they'll do is say, well, we will restructure your loan and everything mm -hmm. and include that interest yours. But and 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 then now we're gonna give you the money to pay back the interest, but now you create another principal. Mm -hmm. And then when, when that time come back, you got to pay that. They're going to say, OK, where do, where's our interest? You say, well, you don't know one that issues an issue. You're the only source. You're the one source of money issue. And we can't create money. We go to jail. We might even lose our life. He said, well, we'll fix it. We'll just create you another uh, loan and another principal, which is <laughs> do new interest. <laughs> so the interest can never be paid back. It only could keep growing bigger and bigger and bigger. The debtor is always slave to the borrower. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you use uh, 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 fractures of banking mm -hmm. and irrede irredeemable currency. Could you say a little slower? Fractions. Fraction reserve. Fraction reserve. Fraction reserve banking. Yeah. Because gotcha. it used to be a time if you if they were allowed to print the paper, the paper wasn't the real wealth. It was just a, 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 a receipt. Yeah. It was like a hat check. Uh, it's like a. Uh, if I wrote you a check, that's a promise to pay. You go yeah. to the bank, they'll pay you. If you go in here and you, it's a hat rack, you put your hat up there, they give you a hat. Uh, 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 oh, like claim a coat check. check. Claim yeah. check. A claim check. <clears throat> yeah. So the claim check is not the hat. It just represents the hat. Yeah. You could always get your hat by giving them the, the, the claim check, right? Mm. That's where that's where the paper was. It was never the wealth. It was just a, a claim check on the wealth. Mm -hmm. And you had to have 100% of the wealth there all the time. Mm -hmm. But then they start getting together with the government and saying that, hey, let's not have to have 100% because the people are not coming back as changing the, the, the wealth. For, they would just change the paper with one another because it was it was called uh, 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 on demand. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, 
the uh, the medium of exchange was you know the paper was called uh, 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 legal on, tender uh, legal, legal, legal tender mm-hmm. on demand. So whoever had it could go get the wealth. So let but me ask people, you this: people were just changing with each other, mm-hmm. but then they say they say that look. You don't have to have 100% no more. You just have 80%. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. What percent then today? It, then it went down to 60%. Then it went on down to 40%. Then it went on. And now there is, there is no uh, percent of wealth that has to be in reserve. Oh, so that, that's, so that's why they call it fractional reserve, because it started with 100%. Then start breaking down in fractions. You said fraction reserve. Yes. Like fractional a fraction. reserve bank. Yeah, hold fraction. a fraction in reserve. Right. Yeah. Instead yeah. of 100%. Then it became fractional. You remember Jim Baker yeah. went to prison because he uh, promised everybody a hotel night stay at the PTL fancy resort. He didn't have enough hotel rooms. He was banking on not everybody Wanting would redeem it. The they sent him to prison for that. The phone company only has enough wiring for 20% of their customers to make a phone call at once. And that's supposed to be legal. Mm-hmm. But they charge us all for on demand anytime. Right. You know, that's the same shell game. Right. Like. It's a shell game because what would happen when they knew that they didn't have to I'd stay with 80 percent. The bankers knew that they only had to keep 80 percent of the reserve there, mm. but they would still print out enough for 100 percent. They would take the, the extra paper that they would have. They would they would loan that out. And charge interest on it. Mm-hmm. So that's how these banks are going under now. A lot of these banks, because yeah. people are making a run on that's, the bank. It's a trick on it, but yeah, that's what's going on. So now, now when people start sending extra paper out there, in in in, in, in uh, with less reserve, then they start creating inflation, because the more you more abundance of something you have, the value of it goes down, right? Yeah. So that now you got inflation. So people start saying, well, let's they start running on the bank, and some of the banks didn't have enough gold. And that's why in the 1930s, they did that and they'd say, well, let's take the people off the gold. Yeah. OK. They let the countries deal with each other with gold, but the people can own gold. Mm-hmm. But this is a problem that we run into. It happened before Trump had been happening for a long, long time. This is why we have a problem. And it, it, you can't pay back more to an only source than was actually created. And so all they're going to do is the interest and the debt is going to continue to grow. Yeah. It still grows off slow like this. And then it exponentially goes up, goes up until yeah. it crashes back down on society. The J curve, they call it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're in that kind of situation. Yeah. We're in that kind of situation. The only way out is that people that, that understand it, they, they, they try to save as much gold and silver as they can. Because now we get into that thing called Gresham's Law, where good money chases our bad money. OK, uh, bad money chase out good money. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, trying to move too fast. So, so you're saying that we should own gold. Yes. And so yes. Gold. Yes. And a lot of states are going back to that, like even Oklahoma. They, they, they make it illegal. They make it like going back to the Constitution where it say that <clears throat> gold and silver should be legal tender. Oklahoma is a state. Texas, Missouri got some legislation right now. They want to make gold and silver legal tender where the citizens can trade in gold and silver. And that's going to be bringing back more gold and silver to people's hands because right now it violates your contract because if we make a contract and I say, well, I want gold and silver for this for this product I got to give you. And then the day we make the contract, you, instead of you give me gold and silver, you give me a dollar equivalent. And I said, no. I want the gold. And you say, well, this is dollar equipment because it's legal tender. And then we go to court, the judge is going to say, that man is right. He can just give you the paper, worthless paper for your products that you made, even though the contract said gold and silver. Right. Yeah. So you're saying, yeah, because I see a lot of these companies, you buy gold, but you don't get, you just get a certificate of gold rather than the actual bullion. Yeah. You know, you know, when you see these ads on TV, (laughs) When you can invest in gold, you can yeah. buy gold, but you're not actually getting gold. They're just sending you a certificate for gold. Yeah. See, that's wrong. If yeah. you actually say that you want a gold, uh, uh, um, an ounce, uh, of gold. ounce of gold, you're supposed to get an ounce of gold. Okay. okay. Yeah, I was going to ask Mr. Hawk, why don't they teach economics in high school like they should? He just answered it because it's our system is set for a crash and they don't want to they teach don't, them. They don't want to teach it because see when the federal government took over the school system, you know, it used to be the states just run their own school system. 
But when the federal government took over, then they was able to just dumb it down the people and, yeah. and teach them only what they wanted to know. They took civics mm-hmm. out, they took economics out, and then they then they then they corrupted the economics so bad, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that people even when you take it, you you, you, you don't know, you, you still don't understand it. understand yeah. it because they t- telling you that. That that a person could deposit a, a certain a, a dollar in a bank and, and it could be uh, blown out ten times what yeah you know whatever but it's 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 all the, no the the most important life skills that a teenager can learn he doesn't get high school credit for mm-hmm. nobody teaches you about your credit score mm-hmm. they don't even teach you how to balance your bank account Mm -hmm. or even how to open one. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't even give you credit for taking uh, to getting your driver's license. That's one of those valuable trade tools you can have. Right. This is why our education is just so backwards. Once they, once they, once they um, see economics is the root of the problem. You know, uh, that's why the Bible said the, the love of money is the root of our evil. And what they're doing is creating this fake money. Mm-hmm. And it's c- contaminating and ruining everything. It's like the blood in your body. Once it gets contaminated, your whole body will eventually die of a uh, 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 fast death. And this is why when we play the game about okay, we're gonna politicians, we're gonna we're gonna give this group some money, we're gonna give this group some money, we're gonna do. We just playing that game, you know, because they're creating this money out of thin air. Yeah, and they just making it worse and worse and worse. Yeah. We got to go back to real money. If wow. we don't go back to real money, we're done. Right. This is what the BRIC nations is about. The, the BRIC nations. Tell me what that means, BRIC nation. BRIC means, <clears throat> that, that's you know, Russia and China. It started off. Oh, the BRIC. Yeah. yeah. B for Brazil, R for Russia, I for India, C for China, China. S for South Africa. They started off as the BRIC nations. You heard of the BRIC nations. Oh, yes. Okay. Now I understand the context. Yes. Now they uh they they double their size because now they got Saudi Arabia, UAE, Egypt, Iran, yeah, uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, and then, and, and then it's uh, they got about thirty some nations yeah. have applied who want to be a part of that BRIC nations because the BRIC nations because Biden uh, using they 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 they, they weaponized the sanctions. They, they, but American American mm-hmm. American dollars supposed to have been a world currency, right? And they weaponize it. <clears throat> well, it's become that, and we benefited from it. And this is to take it down as the yeah currency, right? Yeah, yeah. So now these big nations saying that we don't no longer want to be up under the uh, world currency in the SWIFT system, uh, the United States dollar. We create we create our own thing where we trade with our own currency. We don't have to trade with another country because when you're a world currency, that means that this country over here and this country over here want to trade with one another. Because you know, the United States is a world currency, that means that they have to instead of trading with each other in their own currency, they have to have a pot of money, pot of, a pot of dollars, and they have to make that trade in dollars, not in their own currency. Because the global markets all use the dollar as yeah, the standard in yeah. the, the SWIFT system, but they're saying. Why should I have if I want if I got a neighbor, why should I have to have United States dollars to buy something from yeah. that neighbor? And why do they have to have United yeah. States dollars to buy something from me? Yeah. And this is the biggest threat, isn't it, to our economic to security the dollar. In, in to, to the dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Because now <clears throat> it's going that way. And see, when you put China and India together, they're the two biggest nations in the yeah, world. Close you to got, half the world's population. Yeah, you got three billion people right there. And now you got all these other countries wanting to join. They're going to be bigger in population and everything else than, than the Western nation. So they're going to be getting from up under the dollar. That means the dollar value is going to go down more. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so that's why we're telling people, get you some gold and silver because the dollar's value and every fiat currency in history has collapsed. Mm-hmm. Not one have, have been yeah, they're all temporal. Yeah. yeah. And so this is fiat currency. not backed by anything. And they know that too. So all this, all we're saying is that hey, it's it's it, it it's gonna have to run its course, and you can't change it. And gold and silver is gonna be the last thing standing. So the wise people saying, let me, you know, people save right now in 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 paper. It's a paper profit. But when the paper profit start falling, the banks start falling, everything it's gonna pull everything down with it. Insurance companies, everything else. What about um, what do you think about? Um digital currency 
Well, currency should. I don't think it's going to last. Uh, I, currency should be real wealth. Mm-hmm. And if you do have paper, it should be able to redeem the wealth that it's supposed to redeem. Yeah. Now, digital currency right now is just like this. You can trade stuff in anything, even with digital, you can trade. But when you buy like a, a Bitcoin, you have to buy it with a dollar. Then when you you can tr- and then you can trade with other people that's got Bitcoin. But one day when you want to get out of Bitcoin, you got to come back with the do- into the dollar. Yeah. But the dollar ain't no good, then you 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 just lost out. Yeah. Okay. So so eventually, <clears throat> when when the dollar fall, what you got in the Bitcoin, it's gonna be reduced too because you got to you got to convert it back into some kind of currency, right, or something. If you didn't buy it with gold, and you're not gonna get gold when you sell it, right? So everything is gonna, everything is going to basically be reset. Yeah. They call it reset, the Great Reset. Eddie grew up, or actually raised his family partly in Holland. At mm-hmm. one point, Holland's currency, I think, was tulip bulbs, mm-hmm. and that's what kind of what they yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden yeah. end up with a bunch of tulip bulbs. Yeah. So. so you know, it's it's kind of deep. It's kind of complicated. And I try to write about it. But, you know, because I did study economics, but what I learned in schools didn't didn't. I found that they taught a lot of fake economics. <laughs> Eddie, they don't want him anywhere near the younger fake generation. Fake so what he's saying could upset everything. Yeah, yeah, this whole thing. I mean, and then we talk about the banks, but let me tell you something about the banks. They're going to be crashing, but they're going to keep consolidating. But the bottom line to the bank still hold title to about 90 or 80 percent of the wealth. Mm. So when you when you that's because they had a trick in there. When you when you when you bar it comes into existence through borrowing. That's what the money comes into. You have to borrow it into existence. They call it. Uh, uh, um, 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 monetized debt. Um, they have to borrow into existence. That's why th- when the government wants some money, they create a bond and they and they and and the, um, they they give it to the bank, and then then the government have to pay interest. The, the banks is the one that, that they have title to everything. Mm-hmm. So if it does collapse, you're gonna say okay, well the banks no more, but the banks got the title to the property, saying that you mm-hmm. still owe them. Yeah, they own the real wealth. Yeah, they own the real wealth because they got title. And and if these international bankers and the people, the New World Order, and the, uh, they they know that, and they got the gold, you know. So they gonna be, they gonna be in control of everybody else that don't and don't know. And so what we're gonna go our way back, circle our way back to a feudal type of system, where you have one big landlords, everybody works as serfs, mm-hmm. and if you want to survive, you got to do what they say. Because they 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 own the land now. They they got the gold. They're gonna build. They're gonna have their army. They're gonna pay. They're gonna pay their mercenaries to come and k- take control and keep control. And then they're gonna get rid of people like me real quick b- because you know too much. <laughs> yeah. No. So in addition to everything else you're doing to prepare and protect your independence, growing a garden wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, you could grow a garden. You could do all that. And then they're going to say, but we still owe the land that you growing that garden on. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> but, you know, and then they dumbing down everybody in schools. Nobody understand what's going on. Yeah. And it's sad. It's scary. Wow. My great grandfather came here to the United States because in Belgium, he was told he's going to be a butcher just like his daddy was a butcher, but he never got land. And there was nobody who was going to give him or sell him land at any price there. And America was giving out land for cheap. Mm-hmm. Well, now, by the time he got here, there was no free land. Mm-hmm. But that's the principle I think previous generations had mm-hmm. that we've lost. You know, yeah, yeah it's so funny. Bank and the bankers come and, and they find a way to steal the people's land back. Well, see, that's that's interesting. Yeah, because the two acres and the mule mm-hmm. and uh, what was it? 20, 40, 40, oh, 40. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Austin Powers. Yeah, it's called inflation. They just lost half their value. Dollars, <laughs> two million dollars. We all getting like Biden a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. But no, uh, but 
Oklahoma had a history when Booker T. Washington came back here in 1906. He gave a speech in uh, Muskogee. Oh. And that's when he named Greenwood uh, down here, Black Wall Street. Oh, that's yeah, where he that, named it that? Yeah, he's, Booker T. Yeah, Booker T. did. And so, uh, <clears throat> although he they, didn't name it Greenwood, he called it Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street. Yeah, right. right. Greenwood right. was a. Right, let's so, not, I'm let, sorry. Let's just, yeah. I'm sorry. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so what happened though? Uh, because Muskogee, what happened? The farmers in uh, in down in Muskogee and all of that, Haskell. Uh, there were several of these towns uh, had these black farmers, and they were wealthy people. Mm -hmm. And so you had these rich black folks, and they would come into Tulsa and buy stuff. And you, so you, that made. Greenwood area, very wealthy because you had the tailors and the uh, mm -hmm. clothiers and mm -hmm. shoe, you know, everything, the, the beauticians. And that's how Greenwood area became wealthy, that area, because of these farmers out mm -hmm. there coming yeah. into town, mm -hmm. buying stuff. They had cars. Mm -hmm. They were driving cars. They were all dressed up to the nines, as oh, they yeah. say. And uh, but what happened then, uh, Bowley, Bowley, Oklahoma, uh, Haskell. Yeah, the black towns. Uh, right, all those. And so, but what happened as the the original farmers grew older, their kids, they didn't want to farm anymore. <clears throat> yeah. So they, they ended up selling them. Yeah, that's what the kids said. And, and moved, moved to Chicago, yeah. Atlanta, yeah. Dallas, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. squandered the money and have nothing left. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then, then you end up with these white farmers buying the land, and yeah. and and that's sadly that's what happened in these yeah. townships. Then are now these poor, poor black townships when they used to be wealthy little black townships down mm -hmm. there. So it, it, and Booker so like you're saying, yeah, I mean it, it, it's a tragic thing. And Booker T was saying that land ownership was the key to wealth and prosperity. That was one of the things he was teaching. Uh, he says, uh, 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 people that don't own property is like a rudderless ship. Right. He was saying that, that when you own property, it keeps you stable and keeps you going. But, and that was one of the things that, that the black community just never grabbed a hold of mm -hmm. because we were convinced it was like, like buying, you know, the Indians, the native Americans were convinced. We traded, uh, they traded Manhattan for what? $26 <laughs> worth of crap, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, you yeah. know, they, uh, we were doing, you know, the man came in and was yeah. doing this all all along, convincing him, sell me this for this, mm -hmm. because they were smart enough to know that I'm going to build something with this. Yeah. So. Well, they won't give you the thing that really has value and can give you independence, such as gold. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we had this thing, you know, you're from near Ferguson. Uh, this what looks like a shell group the FBI created called Oath Keepers. When the Ferguson riots happened and it was most of the victims were the black shop owners, mm -hmm. uh, a local group, Oath Keepers, said, you know what? Let's help arm you guys to protect your property because this is lawlessness. The National Oath Keepers group disbanded uh, their franchise because they didn't like the idea of a black man having a gun. They're okay with the old white guy, you know, uh, just, but what I was getting at in this is, you know, to teach a man the kind of things he needs to protect his liberty. These are the things they feel most threatened by. Is this like right. teaching a man to fish? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's like, yeah, uh, but I still think land ownership is like owning gold. Yeah. And it's one of the things that never grows old. In real estate uh, and passing real estate on to your kids is one of the most valuable things you can yeah. do. And um, if you can get your, uh, for example, one of my sons, uh, he, he was able to get $90,000 during COVID not to do his job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I won't say what he does, but mm -hmm. you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. People who know me. 
Anyway, so he got $90,000 not to do a certain job while he had another job. Mm -hmm. So he he took the $90,000 and bought a duplex mm -hmm. with it. And now he's rented out this duplex in a certain state yeah. where real estate is very valuable. Yeah. <clears throat> and he will be able to take that money and he's made it back already. Yeah. And now it's, it's, you know, just multiplying money yeah. and then he can buy another one and another one. I, I have, um, I'm an insurance agent. I don't know if you know, but, and I we still love you though. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes. uh, I have these Mexican clients that came in the legal way mm -hmm. 30 years ago, 40 mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, when they came in, young, 18, 19 year old, started as dishwashers at some little Mexican restaurant. Okay. Moved up into kitchen manager. Mm -hmm. Kept working at the same place. Kinda people cool. people probably had no respect for him, just thought some some slimy Mexican or something, you know, pe stuff people mm -hmm. can think. Bought a little little, you know, one bedroom place in a poor part of town. Got it paid off because they saved their money like crazy. Paid that one off. And once they paid that off with that money from that, their saving and their income from the raises, bought a big, nicer house in the suburbs, rent out the, the little place they had mm -hmm. to another family, then bought a second rental property. Mm -hmm. You know, now, by now, they're driving Escalades. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids are going to college. They've got two or three rental properties. Their big house is paid for, the new house. These guys are living large, manager of, of mm -hmm. this uh, part of a whole big restaurant here in town. And others came in as uh, painters helpers mm -hmm. on some construction company. There were three brothers. Each one now owns their own painting company, having all the contracts that their bosses used to have yep. <laughs> with their own crews, driving these big sure. trucks with their names on, you know. But this is, oh, in fact, I have an example and we're running a little long, but I remember one day I was driving, <clears throat> uh, in North Tulsa, and I was driving past the projects. It was in June, hot as anything. I mean, it was like 106 degrees out, you know. And uh, I'm driving through there about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning. It was quiet. Nobody's moving. I drove by the projects. And I, I'm going by the projects, and I look out front, and what do I see? Like a 19- or 20-year-old Mexican kid out there with a tank top, Bell bottom jeans, tennis shoes, and a, and a baseball hat on backwards with a weed eater, and he's out there cleaning up, mm -hmm. doing doing the projects, and I'm thinking to myself, look at this, and just up up the street was his, you know, Ford pickup truck, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, oh, look at this, I guarantee you, there's probably fifty, at least fifty, young black man asleep <laughs> inside those projects that could be doing the same work that mm -hmm. this Mexican kid is doing. But here's a Mexican kid out here making money right. in this weather when somebody in there should be doing it, but, but they don't want to do it. Yeah. And I, I thought this is the sad state of our country I know. And, and our people. It's yeah. Yeah, the most educational board game I know. It's a game of Monopoly. If you play that by the correct rules, there's no free parking kitty in the middle. But you play <laughs> that right, you cannot win without owning property. Right. Cannot win. Yeah. So, That's Kareem, to finish up, so so you're essentially telling our people that we should own gold or silver. Of course. That's that's what we should you know, definitely. Are it's, you invested in gold and silver? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. that's... We don't want to say it too loud. <laughs> right, yeah. We're, we're robbing it. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Don't, don't make it up, put a target on your back, but really, the smart people 
that understand what's going on, they <clears throat> all are put, put buying gold and silver. Do, do you do any podcasting or you have any kind of outlet, social media where? Well, I'm preparing to start doing some uh, YouTube videos. Oh, I, I'm all set up, wonderful. but I just haven't done it yet because I just finished the book. Uh, Another and book? I, and, yeah, and I don't even have it yet. I, 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 the post office messed up because I, uh, I was supposed to have my book, that extra, that last book. You mean your, your former employer? Yeah, they, 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 they <laughs> trashing his they, boss. They, now. they had me waiting, saying, okay, it's going to be delivered by eight o'clock today, eight o'clock. I'm waiting. Then I went to them, they said that, oh, we actually they sent it down to Arnold, Missouri. <laughs> They're just trying they to get. Got, they they're getting back, back at you. They're getting back at yeah. you for quitting. Yeah, we'll they, teach you to quit. Then they, we got. They got to sit back up here. And then it's got to go to the uh, uh, mail processing unit. Then it's come back to the station. We deliver it Friday. What's the name of your new book? It's called Islam and uh, Economic uh, Freedom. Okay, Islam uh, and the and economic no, freedom. economic science. I mean, so I assume there you're trying to reach out to people who are devout Islam, but you're trying to teach those. Principles. Yeah. See, I, I would like to re, uh, write one on the, what the Bible says about economics, if I, if I get around to it. But yeah, like these books, most of my books are for the general public. This book, I, I try to give something back to, to it's, it's for all Americans, mm -hmm. but it's, it talks a lot about black history. Yeah, I think you're trying to reach black Americans about their heritage. Yeah, here. but but this but this the celebration for all Americans. It is. It really for, does it, 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 It's not just for. Because see, the it was white people put the uh, 13th and 14th, 15th amendments yeah. in the Constitution, yeah, and and it talks about this is this is this is a help bring the 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 people together, not yeah. to divide the people. So this type of it ain't gonna be no lot of it's not gonna be a lot of uh, uh, victimization mentality stuff in here. It's, it's this book is to to help to squash that victimization mentality. Booker T be proud of you. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're saying about Booker T because see, but Booker T ran up against the boys now. And the NAACP, mm -hmm. and they was the one telling everybody to go to the cities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so they they started hooking up with all. This was a fork in the road for 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 Black America. Booker T, Frederick Douglass, all of them, uh, uh, Carter G. Wilson, even Mark, they was on the same vein. Right. Do for self and build uh, economic development. Right. The boys came along on this direction and cause a fucking roll and saying, now the government is supposed to do it all for mm -hmm. you because we socialists and communists. And even the people that found the NAACP were communists and socialists. Mm -hmm. So that they was all up under that. And so they start reaching some of the people that had a little influence and money, say the city's where it's all yeah. at, you know? And really wasn't it the new plantation? Go to the city, work for the man, they live in the projects. Yeah. <laughs> they just wanted to get away from form because book uh, W. Boy and them say, you shouldn't have all that dirt in your on your fingernails and all on your, you know. You supposed to be, you know, sophisticated. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, be a dandy. Know, yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, like me, you know, yeah. like he never had to pay for snow school. He uh, he got uh, Booker had to walk five hundred miles. Oh God, I read his to, autobiography to, 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 to go to school, and a lot yeah. of people don't know that he wrote about fourteen books. Oh. Jeez. They just want to deal with that one, but he walked to school. Then when he got to school, he had to work. He, he slept under a sidewalk. I actually, I actually, in uh, Richmond, he slept under up under a pull up porch. Yeah. Then he, when he got to school, he had to work. He had to pass a test, which to clean the room. He did. He did he I know. Three times. Yeah, I got Amazing, to speak man. at Clark. Uh, it used to be Clark University. It's Clark Atlanta University, mm -hmm. uh, or it used to be Clark Atlanta University, mm -hmm. and now it's just Clark University in Atlanta, and. Uh, I, and that's where Du Bois or Du Bois is somewhere <laughs> called. But the, uh, but yeah, he taught there, mm -hmm. and uh, I met a lady who an elderly lady, and some some other teacher there came up to me when I spoke there with Booker T. Washington's great granddaughter, <clears throat> and um, they came to me and they were saying because uh, I was speaking about the difference between uh, mm -hmm. Booker T. and Du Bois and um, the lady was saying, Yes, you're exactly right. And she's saying, um, Nobody there liked Du Bois mm -hmm. because he was so, he was aloof. Mm -hmm. He was too good. He hated it there mm -hmm. because he, did, <laughs> okay. he didn't like the rank and file Negro yeah. out there because he was better than mm -hmm. everybody else. He always carried himself as this, you know, uh, 
super Negro or something, you know, in another class. And I mean, in fact, if, if this is my time to. <laughs> I'm a book heaven. I'm not a published author, folks. <laughs> My book, one of these, this is the new version. But anyway, y'all have sinned. You can read this better. I the think white one's for white folks. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I talk about it in there, how uh, uh, just how Du Bois was used by Margaret Sanger mm -hmm. and how he looked down upon his own people yeah how he 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 um he helped the essentially he was for the extinguishment mm -hmm. or yeah. the extinguishing mm -hmm. extinguishing of the undesirables in his race that's right. what he was he he was pro birth control and essentially abortion because he didn't think that uh Poor black, ignorant, ignorant black folks should be allowed to breed. Oh my God! I, I, and he's a black man. Yeah, I got that in my books. What he said. He's an enemy as a black man. Oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 terrible, crazy, crazy stuff. So anyway, to sum everything up, because we've kept you all, we thank you for all of your time. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Kareem, give us the names of all your books one more time. Okay. This this is the Thirteenth Amendment Free Week Manual. And it gives you an outline on celebrating the uh, 13th Amendment Freedom Week. week. And 13th Amendment Freedom Week. Yeah, we celebrate freedom in America based upon the 13th Amendment when the first time when everybody was free, before that, it, it, we were still in slaves. Then here's the Free Market Manifesto, and it talks about the, uh, <clears throat> the, the Communist Manifesto is a book that, that gives you 10 planks. And if, if you incorporate those 10 plans, you can take a free market system and transfer, transform it into a social system. My book will give you 20, 20 bill of rights, uh, economic bill of rights, that you, uh, you incorporate those, you can change your social system back to a free market system. Okay. This was, like I said, it's about the relationship between government, economics, and freedom, where you talk, study the different forms of government. And the different economic systems, and you match them, put them together because some economic systems. What's the name of that one again? The relationship between government, economics, and freedom. Okay. Because it's like a marriage. You know, you can you can you can put you, they got the, the government and the economic system has to be compatible, with, just like a marriage. You can put two people together, but they're not compatible. They're not going to work. So it's just common sense stuff. And I like to say that you know I told you about I was looking at some stuff last night and I saw about the uh, the panhandle, Oklahoma panhandle. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. And the way that was created was that Texas wanted to become a, a state mm -hmm. in, uh, in the union, but it wanted to, I think it wanted to come in as a free state. As a slave state, but no slate could come in as a slave state if it oh, was yeah. above a yeah. certain line. Yeah, yeah. So the Missouri Compromise said that no slave state could be above the 36th parallel, parallel, which is the very bottom of Missouri. So, so when you take that Missouri and you go all the way across, with what, what Texas was had more land in it, but and it went beyond that 36th parallel. Yeah. So, in order to become in, into the union, then um, they had it, to cut it they off. They had to cut it off. So, right at the top, right at the bottom, where the Panhandle is, and that's the top of Texas, and it's and it's the same. It's either either equal or less than the thirty sixth parallel, mm -hmm. which is, is if you if you take that line and go all the way across, you you'd be right at the bottom of Missouri. Mm -hmm. So then for thirty five years, it it didn't really belong to nobody because Kansas was trying to take it. It, it was called a no man's land. Yeah, that's right. Okay, but then I think in eighteen ninety it was given to Oklahoma. That strip, yeah, that was taken from uh, that 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 panel, which was taken from the top of Texas, mm -hmm. and so that, that's I, I was just curious about yeah that panhandle, mm -hmm. uh, because Texas was uh, Kansas was was going to get it, but I think whoever was in charge did not sign the paperwork. If they would sign <laughs> the paperwork, it, it would belong to Tech uh, Kansas. Kansas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would have been difficult because you almost have a four corners. It wasn't by land attached to them. 
because it was part of what was called Oklahoma Territory because a year before we just had our land run Mm -hmm. in western Oklahoma. But um, the other thing I want to say, I found a YouTube uh, account called Kareem Hawk. Mm -hmm. You got three videos all from December. I think it was your 13th Amendment get together. Mm -hmm. Was that what it was about when Eddie came up to your conference? Yeah, we videoed that too. Okay, so folks, you want to hear more about this, and there's so much more here. It is Kareem Hawk at YouTube. That's K A R I E M H A Q Q. Mm -hmm. Okay, I I want people to be able to reach out, subscribe to you, and stay in touch. And you're probably seeing us more YouTube videos. Yeah, we, that's what we're gonna be starting to do YouTube videos. Okay, and if they were, and my books are all on Amazon. They just go to Amazon and get my books. And my okay. uh, e- telephone number is three one four five three seven four one six nine. Or you come through to you all through Eddie right. if there's anybody uh, wanted to get in contact with me any kind of way. But we do want to expand this freedom movement. Yes, and uh, spread all over the uh, country because we can do a lot of education while we celebrate. Mm-hmm. And uh, because, you know, it's, it's for everybody. It's, it's not just a, 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 you know, a black thing or whatever, but it's for all Americans. Yeah. And, and so we expect for the American, all Americans who are conservative and who understand the Constitution, wants the Constitution, believe in the Constitution, <clears throat> help us in the, in the black community to learn about this. So you can start putting on the 13th Amendment Freedom Week uh, uh, celebrations and stuff like that and start teaching it because sometimes uh, <clears throat> a chain, it, what they say, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. Yeah. And so if we don't help to educate the whole America, yes. don't just leave us out there on a, a, a ship just floating around, being influenced by everybody, but come and teach the real history. Yes. Uh, th- th- because if, the, if the, the the weakest link is don't have it together, that weak link can help to destroy the pull mm-hmm. down the whole ship. Yeah. So we have to really reach out to all Americans, yep. and 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 uh, because if not, they're gonna be putting in all this uh, critical race theory, all this negative information, and all is designed to to teach hate and divide the country. Mm-hmm. So. It's all our responsibility. That's why, you know, we we should get involved with the Thirteenth Amendment. It's mm-hmm. it, whatever religion you are. It, 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 it won't. It's not against anybody religion. Not against anybody politics. Not against any race or anything. This is the best. This this freedom movement is the best thing right now going on in America. All right. All right then. So, so appreciative of this day. Yes. Hey everybody, thank you very much for being with us, and we will talk to you again next week. God bless. See ya. All right. You know.